Phew, what a scorcher. Good afternoon and welcome to 90 Minutes Live in association with Easy Shelf. We are this afternoon at the Pexhurst Stadium in Welling Garden City for the FA Trophy first qualifying round between Welling Garden City and Basildon United. Full live commentary coming up. I'm Peter Hill and sitting to my right, as always, a good afternoon to Simon Alamandi. Yeah, good afternoon, Pete. Good afternoon, everyone. And you are right, it's absolutely roasting here today. And uh, I really do feel for these uh, the players and officials all involved today. But uh, hopefully, we're still running for a good exciting game. Yeah, hopefully so. Two teams who, well, as far as Wellington City are concerned, I mean, the FA Trophy, let's start with that. It's one of those competitions you know you're not going to win. But, uh, you know, you can get a lot of confidence from, as uh, citizens did a couple of years ago when they ended up in the third qualifying round. But looking at the start they've had this season, I think it's a really important game for Mark Weatherston. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, we, we know they've uh, you know, had a couple of good runs in there uh, lately. And, uh, you know, a good performance last week in the, in, in the FA Cup against Hitchin Town, though they lost. But from what I gather, it's, you know, it was a, a very promising uh, performance in that game. And hopefully they can build from that and take that into today and uh, you know, perform something uh, with a little bit better result. Well, this afternoon's uh, abundance battles on United are in the Ismian League Division 1 North, currently 10th in the table. Lost 3-2 at home to uh, Waltham, so last time out on uh, Bank Holiday Monday. But I must admit, I saw the, uh, the highlights of that game on YouTube and I missed a number of chances and uh, could well have got a result there. And, of course, a uh, little bit of a link. Nicky Ironton, former manager here, of course, who's now manager at Waltham. So there's other ties in the uh, Isuzu FA Trophy this afternoon. We'll be interested in where go to Hadley and the Hartford at a home to Grays Athletic. Let me uh, take you through the two team lineups we've got. Starting with uh, the visitors, Basildon United. They start with George Marsh in goal, Jamie Bennett, Kai Jude, the captain, Alejandro Mercado, Sid Walker, Sam Brogan, Kai Brown, Callum Berkey, Samir Ali, Marty Gage, and Clyde Samazi. And on the bench for them, Ellis Ashworth, Alfie Osborne, Ben Allen, Callum Fitzer and Anisus Lewis. Just uh, two changes from uh, that side that uh, lost against Waltham. So Wellington City made three from the team that, uh, as Simon was saying earlier, lost in the FA Cup 2-1 at Hitchin Town. And there's also a place for new signing Ryan Kerwin, who was uh, signed uh, yesterday, I believe, who was formerly at Amwell Town, although he was here last season, played over 20 games for the Citizens. That a start a big day for Charlie Crowley. Not only is it his uh, last game before going up Kilimanjaro, we'll tell you about that a little bit later, but it's also his 100th in goal for Welling Garden City. Alex Harris, Ryan Kerwin makes his debut, James Koloski, Josh Steele, Yazin Abudahu, Henry Jones, James Mully, the skipper, Brad Watkins, Donnell Winter, the top scorer with five so far this season, and Ethan Kessel make up the uh, starting 11 for Welling Garden City. On the uh, bench is the uh, young goalkeeper Donna Bahan Green, Freddie Brown, Adam Pollock, Ryan Doherty, who uh, is going to be making his last appearance here. He's going to be off to Ireland uh, after the game here, so we wish uh, Ryan all the best of luck. And uh, Bailey Stevenson and Mark Weatherston, the boss on the bench, complete the lineups and to uh, dot the I's and further cross the T's. Referee is David Nicholson from uh, Bista in Oxfordshire. And uh, his two assistants, of course, Isaac and uh, James Gehring. Also, Isaac seems to be following us about. He was uh, doing the East Hearts derby last time we were on there. So, well, uh, <laughs> Is, is it him following us or us following him? Well, <laughs> who knows? So you, uh, the draw for the next round of this has already been made, of course. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting quirk of, of FA draws because uh, last season, yeah, Welling Garden City, where uh, the teams come out here, were beaten in the uh, first qualifying round by New Salamis. And uh, Basildon were beaten by Lowestoft and uh, gets who the winner of this will play yes they'll play either New Salamis or Lowestoft a real quirk of the draw out come the teams then Wedding Garden City in uh, their familiar strip of the uh, and uh, Battledom United uh, change kit very neat green and white stripes and uh, green shirts and uh, green socks 
Paul Claret for uh, well in the Arden City and uh, I'm sure this may perhaps last a little longer than a normal half because uh, when I got in my car it was 36 degrees uh, so we're going to be in for some breaks I'm sure as uh, these two teams themselves get to grips this afternoon with this one so what are you expecting Zai? Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you say just then, I mean, I did see uh, a, a couple of things out from a couple of leagues about saying, you know, not just water breaks as well, but you, you can have, like, comfort breaks, which can last anything between 90 seconds and three minutes as well, just for um, people to sort of, like, you know, recuperate from the heat a little bit. So, yeah, I think there's going to be plenty of stoppages. Absolutely uh, the most sensible thing to do. And, but, you know, the, the thing is, we don't really know what kind of game we're going to get because the heat's going to have a big impact of it. So I imagine it's going to be, you know, a, a bit of a slow build-up to, uh, to the start of the game, definitely. Well, you would think so. I don't know in terms of a history because these two teams have never met before. So it's the first meeting ever of Basildon United and uh, Welling Garden City. Basildon in the uh, huddle. Just uh, in the centre of the half, it looks like they will be uh, defending in the first half here. 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf. Uh, before we start this one, thanks for everybody who gave us all the uh, feedback after the East Hearts derby, which was the last time we were on. All the views on uh, YouTube and uh, everything else as well. And uh, we will, of course, be following local football throughout the season. Thanks to our sponsors, uh, Easy Shelf. And uh, we're also going to be on uh, TikTok, I understand. Yeah, I, I, I've kind of started, uh, kind of started something on there. Yeah, you know, egg, egged on by my daughter a little bit. So uh, we've got our dancing shoes on, and we're going to do a couple of little dances. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, it's purely football. Purely football. It's all about. Don't worry, Pete. So we're there. We're all over it. Social media. We're there. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on TikTok. And uh, we're on everything else as well. So, uh, two skippers in the centre circle, James Mully for uh, Welly Garden City. No, James Well, of course, for his time at Ware. And uh, the skipper for Basildon United, Kai Jude, former Whitton Town player. And it uh, looks like we're going to go as we are, which means uh, Welly Garden City will be kicking from right to left. Here at the uh, Pexhurst Stadium. I have to get used to that one. Our commentary position is uh, probably about two or three yards inside the half, being defended by Battleton United in the first half of this FA Trophy tie. Battleton fans have uh, just been by us, but got a feeling they might make their way to the goal behind the right where Charlie Crowley is, as the referee checks with both his assistants. And on a scorching Saturday in September, would you believe? We are just about to get underway here. Away we go. So Basil, who uh, so made a reasonable start to the season after a 3-0 defeat against Leighton Town in the uh, FA Cup. Disappointing for them. In possession with a right back, Joe Bennett. Bennett's long ball forward takes one bounce over the head of Guy Brown. And into the arms of uh, Charlie Crowley. All in orange. Long kick forward by Charlie. Lands midway inside the battles and a half. But uh, he's going to be, uh, well, just about kept in by uh, Clyde Zamezi on that far side. But in fact, he lets it run out of play. And Martin Garden City will have themselves a throw in. Alex Harris down the line. Zamezi again up in the air. Headed down and... Uh, Everybody just trying to get hold of the ball, and Simon says they're going to have to acclimatise to uh, this. Certainly, you know, you might expect this in the middle of uh, July, possibly in August, but uh, don't really expect it on the 9th of uh, September, as the uh, ball breaks on the edge of the Basildon box. Having gone City looking for a bit of movement, picks out uh, Ryan Kerwin. His first touch back in a citizen's shirt, finds Ethan Kessel down this. Uh, near side, Kethel puts it back to his left back when uh, faints the dummy and keeps going, goes round one but uh, he's outnumbered by green shirts and Guy Brown will pick it up but uh, in the end his progress is uh, blocked well by uh, the number six Shazin Budahu he's played uh, over 160 games for uh, Citizens back here of course fan favourite, was here when they were uh, promoted from the Spartans League Basildon United then in possession midway inside their own half with uh, Alejandro Mercado who was in the Real Madrid's youth team once 
bit of a change as uh, ball on that far side makes its way once again to Mercado puts it down the line to Samasi Samasi's progress is blocked but uh, Basil did retain possession with the Spanish centre back ball now going down that right hand side where Guy Brown has found himself feeds the ball inside the area and Marty Gage controls it once controls it twice fires in the shot and uh, in the end I think it was Ryan Kerwin who got in the way Otherwise, in fact, it was Alex Harris who got in the way and uh, ball ricochets behind for a corner. Yeah, I, you know, good defending there from the, uh, from the Welling Garden City side and uh, early corner for, uh, for Baddersden. Going to be taken by uh, Marty Gage. Started his career as a West Ham youth player. Ball ricocheting around Essex a little bit. It's going to take the corner with the right boot two arms up in the air it goes towards the near post header comes in good save by Charlie Crowley super save by Charlie Kai Jude was almost going to celebrate that opening goal then and Charlie celebrating his 100th appearance for Welling Garden City has stopped them going one behind there ball on the uh, halfway line it's Donnell Winter first chance we've uh, Got to see the top scorer. Threads it out on that uh, right-hand side. Henry Jones. Henry tries to pull the ball across. And from one corner at one end, we've got a corner at the other end. But uh, go back to the other one, Simon. Super save by Charlie. Oh, absolutely fantastic save from Charlie. You know. It was po- almost point-black range as well for, for, the, uh, for the effort. A uh, lovely diving effort. And uh, that's, that's, that's the sort of saves that we know Charlie can make. Well, I must admit, I was uh, about to make a goal goal there. So uh, Charlie keeps it at nil-nil as Ethan Castle prepares to take Welling Garden City's first corner far side of the field with four minutes gone here at the Bexhurst. We stand at nil-nil. Here comes the corner. It's going to be chipped towards the... Oh, and coming across on the far post was James Koloski. And, well, I don't know whether he expected to be there, but in the end... He just followed it tamely wide, but that was a really good opportunity. Yeah, no, 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 another great opportunity that we've uh, that we've seen in the game, and uh, yeah, like, like you say, I don't think he expected it to, to come to him and, and find himself in that sort of position, and he, he couldn't quite get the angle on it. And as you say, just like tamely, uh, tamely made the effort. So scared either end, but we stand at nil nil as Machado puts the ball. Gage helps it on. Guy Brown can't get hold of it. Alex Harris can. Plays the ball to Henry Jones down that uh, right hand side. Tackle comes in from uh, Sam Brogan and uh, manages to win a throw in for his team on that uh, far side of the field. Everybody over there basking in sunlight. Could do with one of those old dugouts, couldn't you? Not one of those uh, nice plexiglass new ones on a day like this. One of the old ones you could hide in and get a bit of shade. Alex Harris down the line looking for the running Durnell Winter. Bernal Winter manages to uh, get hold of the ball and does well. Turns the ball back, looking for Henry Jones. Is Koloski again, just outside the box. Finds Sterno Winter right inside of the box. Chance to tee up the cross. Far post, nobody there. Ethan Castle will try and keep it in before it goes out for a throw-in, but won't do so. And uh, chance going missing. As far as uh, Welling Garden City are concerned. I mean, it's, it's been a poor start to the season here, particularly... The uh, 5-2 at home, the Biggles Wade on opening day, followed up by a 4-1 against Waltham Abbey, which uh, had the uh, boss Mark Weatherstone apologising to the supporters for his side. So uh, certainly the citizens need to get to grips with things this afternoon. As it's a throw in to the opponents, Battles of United right in front of us is Joe Bennett. Uh, Gage can't control it and then smashes into the back of uh, Ethan Kessel. And gives Welling Garden City a free kick right on the half way line, which Kerwin will take. Searches out Henry Jones on that far side. Jones brings it down well. It's on the right hand side of the box, tried to pick out Koloski, but uh, in the end it was Sid Walker who got in the way for Basildon. The ball breaks on the half way line. Boudoud has given it away. Samezi, a neat bit of footwork, takes the number 11 forward, plays it on that left hand side to Samir Ali. But uh, linesman's flag on this near side dictates the fact that uh, he was offside. But uh, go 
got to say, thought it'd be gaugey at the beginning, but it's anything but at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was I was thinking exactly the same sort of thing. There was me saying, you know, we might see a uh, a slow start to the game, but uh, <laughs> it's been all action so far. Free kick from Charlie Crowley on to the head of Brad Watkins. But uh, in the end, with the one bounce, it uh, arrives at goalkeeper George Marsh. Here's Samir Ali. Castle's going to get there first, and uh, James Mully will get there ahead of Gage. And here's Brad Watkins on the edge of the area. Goalkeeper comes out, couldn't get there. But uh, in the end, does manage to push it up in the air and grab a hold of it. It's Brentwood. Battled and rather coming forward. Samir Ali inside for Gage. Gage's long ball forward. Kai Brown's the only man up front. And uh, Boudou manages to clear. James Mully back to the edge of his area and he'll run all the way for Charlie Crowley. Well, in Golden City's uh, best time in this competition, of course, was that uh, third qualifying round 2021 when they uh, had all the shot here as Brad Watkins picks it up. He's got Castle on his left, goes right, where uh, Henry Jones is going to have to make up some ground to keep that in. Does do, and does so well as well. Wins well in Garden City, their second corner. Yeah, back in uh, that run they had, which uh, Haywood, Heath, Horsham, Hensford and Burgess Hill Town on two notable Tuesday nights here, I remember. As, uh, took them through against uh, Aldershot and he was all spoiled by Covid because it was a game played behind closed doors and uh, the last football we didn't know we were going to see that season as well so uh, that thankfully has uh, gone away and football all seasoned on 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf Ethan Kessel to take the corner for Welling Garden City on that far side of the field and if it's a movement uh, in the uh, box, Josh Steele, the big number five's come up. James Kolarski was going round the back post again, but George Marsh kicks the ball out well, finds Kai Brown. Well, Gordon said he could have defending to do here, but Ali over hits it, and it goes straight into the arms of Charlie Crowley. Well, in Gordon said he, of course, 17th in Southern League Division One Central, which is something that Mark Weatherston and his team will want to put right fairly quickly. We've got a throw in here on this uh, near side of the field. Ryan Kerwin making his uh, second debut for Welling Garden City. Will take it. It was popular here and uh, first time around last season. Couldn't get a place at uh, Hanwell, so has come back. Dunno Winter struggling to uh, ward off Joe Bennett. And in the end, it's Bennett who gets there first, finds Kai Brown. Messi going down the uh, left touch line. That's a good ball by Guy Brown. Messi's in the area here. Pulls it across. Oh, that's super defending. In the end by Kerwin, who got there ahead of Samir Ali, who really would have had a shoe in. Good defending by the left back. And meanwhile, a free kick on the halfway line. So uh, certainly, Ryan Kerwin, excellent bit of defending there. Yeah, yeah, fan, yeah fantastic breakaway down there to that left hand side. For Basildon United, and uh, it, once that ball was put in, it, it, it really looked like it was going to be a goal. But uh, you know, from, from uh, Ryan, fantastic, fantastic work. Ten minutes to go on that at the Black's Hurst, nil nil between Welling Garden City and Basildon uh, United. The other two ties involving our clubs, where have gone to Hadley Hartford are at home uh, to Grays as uh, Samir Ali fires the ball in once more, and it takes the uh, interception from Budahu to put it out on this side. The Basildon fans have just find their voice a little bit behind the goal with their uh, black and yellow checked flag. That will be their normal shirts, of course, but uh, playing in uh, green and white stripes. Always nice to see from a commentator a team playing in stripes, but they've got a uh, flat green back to it and the nice white numbers. Some of that Sheffield Wednesday rubbish. I remember that. As uh, throwing comes in on this near side. It's going to be a long one. It's going to go to the near post. Charlie Crowley's dropped it. It's forced in, is it? Oh, it's ricocheting about. And Ethan Gessel managed to get it off the line. When it looked once again as Basildon would be odds on to score. Pinball in the box after Charlie dropped the ball. And well, in God, and City get out of that. The mind more defending to do here, though. Kai Brown's got it. Puts it towards the box. Up goes uh, Budahu. Only up in the air and not away, though. 
up once more goes Koloski and uh, Winter will pick it up but he's giving it away to Gage on this near side Gage is crossed to the far post they're all queuing up and in the end it was Josh Steele who managed to get it away and James Mully anywhere will do but he's only finds Samitsi Samitsi's long ball forward over the top of everybody and Charlie Crowley will collect it I'm sure take a huge sigh of relief yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think you just need to sort of, you know, take a little bit of uh, take a little bit of time with this now, just to lead, let the uh, little willing guys on, grab guys. a little bit of momentum on, after those uh, those couple of minutes there. Yeah, the Basildon have proved they're going to be quick on the break. Charlie's kick on this uh, near side goes uh, straight out of play for a throw in to uh, the visitors. There'll be uh, drinks breaks for the commentators as well, by the way. Should have Nefe ruling on that one, really. But uh, ball back with the goalkeeper, George Marsh. Was uh, Cheson once was uh, George Marsh. As, uh, he puts the ball out to his uh, skipper, Pai Jude. Boudou returns it with the interest inside the Basildon half. Good challenge coming out from uh, Ethan Kessel on Callum Burkey, but... Uh, Ball will go out for a throw-in to the visitors who have had the better of the opening period here at the Plexhurst. No doubt about that. The two away games so far with a 1-1 and the one they would have wanted to win, the uh, local derby against Brentwood, won that 3-2. Kai Brown got a brace on that occasion, but uh, on their other occasion in FA competition, they lost 3-0 at home to, oh, oh away rather, to uh, Leighton Town. As uh, Marsh clears the ball onto the halfway line to Berkey, his ball forwards, fires Kai Brown. Brown tries to beat uh, Charlie Crowley, doesn't do so, but it wouldn't matter even if he had, because there was a linesman's flag up on this uh, near side of the field. Future fixtures for uh, for any teams at this level are a little bit questionable because. Uh, there's uh, the FA Cup to come next week, of course. The following week will be in the next round of this. But uh, Welling Garden City have got a league game here next Saturday when they uh, entertain Biggleswey Town. Sorry, they've got an away game when they go to Biggleswey Town. And the uh, next scheduled league game here is uh, Tuesday the 26th against AFC Dunstable. But uh, in between that, if they get through this... And they'll have a home dry in the FA Trophy on Saturday the 23rd. Kai Brown going for Boudou. Just a little shove there to put him off. But uh, Josh Steele was there. Puts the ball back to uh, Charlie Crowley. Another long kick from Charlie. Searching out Henry Jones. Can't find him. And uh, Machado plays the ball to uh, Samisi. Samasi, but uh, he's given it away. And on this near side scrappy passage of play. Ends up in the ball going out for a, a throw-in. Half-time, by the way, uh, teams were involved in FA Youth Cup action. We'll uh, wrap that up at uh, half-time of the Golden Boot. And uh, some interesting facts about Basildon that I uh, managed to find. And we'll also tell you why Charlie Crowley will be uh, halfway up Kilimanjaro in a couple of weeks' time. As uh, the ball is back deep inside the Basildon United a half. Played forward to Samir Ali. Ali has to uh, turn away from the attention of the Kerwin and bring up Gage. Gage's ball, though, is snatched upon by Joshua Steele. Far side of the field, Kessel's given it away, though, to uh, Machado. Not coming off at the moment for Mark Weatherston's team. More defending to be done here, and Steele just managed to uh, get it across in front of uh, Clyde Samasi, former uh, Fisher Athletic winger. There's going to be a throw-in on that uh, far side of the field. Everything a little bit slow. I think really takes every breather they can get, certainly rather them than me out there. But uh, it's hot enough here. Back row of the stand. Those uh, throws taken by Alessandro Mercado. His Gage, who's uh, looked lively at the start, is uh, Marty Gage, but that time he lets the ball go out for a goal kick to uh, Welling Garden City. Coming up for uh, Basildon, by the way, they've got action on Tuesday. They're playing in the uh, Ismian Velocity Cup away at uh, Erith and Belvedere. And then uh, next Saturday, they go to Brightling Sea Region. It's great for people who like their football names, isn't it? Erith and Belvedere, followed by Brightling Sea Regent. 
Don't get teams like that in the Football League. Long kick forward by Charlie Crowley. Brad Watkins is beaten to it in the air and land inside the centre circle. Darnell Winter will uh, go up on the challenge from Bennett. And uh, Berkey will turn it back to uh, his uh, captain. Kerwin's done well to get up and find Dino Winter on this left-hand side, though. Chances now for Welling Garden City. Winter turning right, turning left, puts it across the box. Here's Kolarski, but uh, doesn't control it well. First time, second time, fires in the shot straight at George Marsh. Decent safe by the goalkeeper, straight at him, but uh, first real effort that he's had to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, nice build-up from, uh, from Welling. And, uh, you know, he's taken the shot, but uh, easy save for the keeper there. George Marsh in uh, light blue shirt pulls it out to uh, his uh, number three and skipper Kai Jude. He finds Samir Ali on the uh, halfway line for the bees. Back to uh, the skipper inside his own half. We said about uh, it would take a while to get going. Well, it did actually get going and now it slowed down. Got a feeling that uh, the heat has got everything to do with that. Although uh, Alessandro uh, Machado, I mean, he's a former uh, Rimwooded youth player. He should be used to this, shouldn't he? Ball on this near side. Did he go out right in front of us? Linesman says it did. Samir Ali couldn't keep it in. And one in Garden City have got themselves a throw in. That's Ryan Kerwin. The uh, left fullback uh, will take. Josh Bryant, we were talking to, uh, to him uh, for the kickoff, by the way. Josh is out a couple of weeks, unfortunately, with an ankle injury. So uh, he's on the, uh, on the sidelines, talking about his move from uh, Hartford. Always good to see Josh. And, uh, I think it was, was his auntie that used to listen to us. It was, I yeah, think his, it was. his auntie in, in Norfolk. I think, Norfolk, was it? yeah. That's where I was this week. So if, uh, if Josh's auntie is listening, very good afternoon to you. And uh, we're going to get one of those drinks breaks now with uh, 18 minutes of the uh, first half gone. As uh, everybody gets just a little bit of uh, liquid uh, on board. I think it's the perfect time for uh, you know for the referee to uh, to call the drinks break. You know the the the, uh, the trainers come on, the physios come on, and uh, it makes it makes sense to everyone. Say right, okay, you know, take a couple of minutes and uh, you know, get yourself refreshed. And uh, I think I think the referee's going to go and do the same as well. And I don't blame him. <laughs> Absolutely, feel sorry for the yeah, two yeah, linesmen, so really, don't you? Well, it's this line, one, this side. Yeah. Yeah. Linesman's yeah. just passed the referee a drink and. The, Poor lines from this side. I don't think he's. Uh, don't think he's got one. Well, Henry Jones has got one, but he's on his backside at the moment because Rachel Wong, the uh, Welling Garden City physio, is giving him treatment with way inside. Uh, like he basled and a half. Henry gets to his feet, gingerly walking across on that far side. So uh, we'll see what situation is there. Mark Weatherston's having a little bit of a concerned look. To see if his number seven can uh, continue. He's got options. Uh, on the bench, including himself, of course. But uh, I've had a few a manager. Will you bring yourself on in this? <laughs> I don't think. I don't, the thing is, if, if he brings himself on, he's got to go and change his shorts and put his socks on. Absolutely. So I, can't, I can't. I can't see him making an appearance. I think it's just uh, one, one of them ones. It, it's another Michael Bardell situation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As uh, players make their way gingerly back out onto the pitch here at the uh, Petshurst Stadium, Petshurst New. Sponsors for uh, Welling Garden City uh, Football Club. Nice to see plenty of sponsorship boards around for uh, Dave Coates and his uh, management team. Do such a good job here. Thanks to uh, Dave for the warm welcome that I received before the uh, kick-off here. Always lovely to uh, meet the people at Welling Garden City. The uh, game's going to uh, restart in a minute with a throw-in to the home side on this uh, near side. Ryan Kerwin will come across to uh, take it. Henry Jones is still off the park on the far side, but I uh, do have the feeling he's going to be uh, OK because he's getting a few instructions from Josh Hurkart, the uh, assistant manager here. Remember Josh playing at Potter's Bar. Very solid defender. As uh, Ryan Kerwin will take the throw in right in front of us at the back. So it's 90 minutes live in association with Easy Shelf. Ball thrown down the line. Look at Watkins, but uh, in the end, it's the number eight, Calvin Berkey, who gets his uh, head there first. Kerwin will get a, uh, another chance from the uh, throw-in on this near side. Watkins is on the edge of the area. Koloski comes short. 
That's the turn. But it's a decent one in the box. In comes Henry Jones. But uh, Machado was there covering his run. Could be a chance to break forward. They always Samassi on that far side. Ethan Gessel does a decent job of delaying his progress. But he's got around the Welling Garden City man. Brought in Kai Brown. But uh, he shows too much of it to Boudou. And here's Brad Watkins. He wasn't offside. Good save by the goalkeeper's legs. Breaks to Dernell Winter. And he skies it into the trees. Behind the goal, Brad Watkins, well, the linesman didn't think he was offside, but I had a big question mark, I've got to say. Well, I mean, I must admit, as soon as that ball came through, I looked straight over to the linesman, and the linesman had his flag down, was saying, no offside. And I, I think Brad was just as surprised as we were. Well, I've got an opportunity for Welling Garden City to take the lead. We've had opportunities at the other end as well, but we still stand at nil-nil. Halfway through a scorching first half at the Vegas Hurst in Welling Garden City. Alejandro Mercado on this uh, near side, but uh, Samir Ali couldn't keep it in. And so Kerwin will take uh, another throw. He's a bit of breeze because the Baton United bees on tour flag, which is attached behind uh, the goal Charlie Crowley's defending, is blowing a little bit in it. But uh, must admit, we're feeling precious little of it here in the stand. Kerwin down the line looking for Brad Watkins decent header forward Henry Jones has made his way over from the uh, right hand side but uh, Basildon will sort that out and they get a throw in right in front of us on this uh, near side with uh, former Wartham so player Joe Bennett Bennett finds Berkey oh he didn't control it well Goloski does well to rob him but then gives the ball away tamely on the edge of the area and Basildon will sort it out Bennett has it midway inside his own half and going forward the number two with the white boots plays it to his left hand side to Berkey, Berkey back into his own half for Kyle Jude Jude on to the halfway line and then further on that far side from Ricardo who's made his way up from the back the number four neat bit of footwork takes him uh, one way round <laughs> he's a guessel but uh, couldn't dummy the referee who gets in the way the ball comes off the official and so we've got another stoppage in play where the referee will give the ball back to the team who were in possession when he got in the way and that's uh, Basildon United I don't know whether it was a good bit of defending by the referee or uh, he certainly didn't bind the dummy as uh, referee's waving Donnell Winter back because he's got to give it to the team that were in possession. And uh, he does exactly that onto the halfway line. Long ball pushed forward on this near side. Kerwin heads it forward for Willing Garden City. Here's Berkey inside the gauge. Gage back into his own half once more for the number two Bennett. Down the line looking for Samir Rally all through the legs of Kerwin. For Gage to put it across the box, it's Kai Brown and couldn't get a touch on it. Charlie Brown, Charlie Crowley rather, comes out and collects it. And Kai Brown, well, couldn't get a touch on the ball in the end. Another opportunity. His opportunity is coming really when uh, Basildon get the ball wide. Samir Ali's pulled on this right hand side, Samasi on the left, and uh, Gage going through the middle is the front three. And they've had more of the ball up front than Welling Garden City have, where Brad Watkins has been just a little bit outnumbered at times. That's a free kick. Sid Brown goes in with Sid Walker, rather, goes in with the uh, challenge. Ethan Kessel will take the uh, free kick for Welling Garden City, some 15 yards inside the half, being defended by Basildon United. Got uh, Joshua Steele, who's come up from the back. James Koloski as well, and Brad Watkins. So plenty of height against a fairly diminutive Basildon team. It's got to be said. His Koloski goes up with a header, headed back out, back in by Koloski, and finally, it's Mercado who manages to get it clear. Only as far as James Mully, headed on by Henry Jones, but uh, the Spaniard should get it clear again, and he does. Kai Brown does well. Good strength on the halfway line. Is Samassi going on the left-hand side. Samassi's in the box. Charlie Crowley comes out. Samassi's gone round him. Miss kicks his gauge. Oh, and Charlie Crowley somehow saves with his legs when he's going in the wrong direction and manages to keep Basildon United out. Only Eno will now he saved that one. Gage puts it in the area. Boudou gets it clear and whoa, heroics there from Charlie. Yeah, that was a fantastic save there from Charlie. He, he's seen the danger there. Rushing back across his goal. I think he's gone to go one way and then, then he's had to go back the other. And uh, 
Yeah, as you say, a great save with his legs there. 26 minutes gone. He's kept well in Garden City in this match because Basildon United have had by far the better of the opportunities. But thanks to Charlie Growley, we'll still stand at 0 0. Throw in on this uh, near side, Ryan Kerwin will find uh, Yasin Boudou. Boudou's long ball forward. Henry Jones can't get a hold of it. He's changed things a little bit. Henry Jones has uh, gone in behind Brad Watkins and Dunno Winter's pulled a little deeper. But it's Samaria Alley. Good challenge by Boudou coming in. But uh, once more, it's battled and her fastest to the ball. The ball flicked forward as Kai Brownie's on side. Charlie Crowley saves it again. It'll rebound to Gage on the edge of the area. And James Mully should finally get it clear for Welling Garden City. They are walking a very dangerous tightrope at the moment as citizens. Amir Ali has uh, gone down. He uh, had a knock before that passage in play. But uh, you can see Mark Weatherstone has changed it a little bit up front, but uh, they're getting caught out time and time again going through that midfield. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of danger. You know, a few, few through balls been through the, uh, through the centre of the field. You know, some, some plays down the, uh, the, down the left-hand side that have brought them a few problems. And uh, I, I think Mark needs to, uh, to, ha- to have a think and, uh, and, and think of a, a, a way to deal with that, especially with Kai Brown, because uh, he's looking a real threat. Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? He's been uh, around and about as uh, Kai Brown. Started out with Ipswich, uh, then went to Greys. Uh, he's been at Whitehawk as well. He's a player who's played at uh, a higher level than this, as uh, Samir Rally is uh, still getting a little bit of uh, treatment. Burnham Ramblers was his uh, other team. That's great in there. El- Everything builders here. Bright Lindsay Regent, Burnham Ramblers. It's great non league football, isn't it? Just great. Okay, Samir so Ali's going to be all right as the uh, physio. Tom Pulley makes his uh, way to the sidelines. And uh, game's going to uh, restart with a throw in, which Joe Bennett of Basildon United will take. Looks for Marty Gage. Ball comes back at the feet of uh, Joe Bennett to the edge of the area. Boudou should clear fairly easily. He does. Here's Brad Watkins still inside his own half as Sterno Winter makes the run down this left-hand side. But in the end, it was uh, decent defending by Sid Walker, which puts the ball out for another throw-in to Welling Garden City. As Kerwin turns it inside for James Mully. Kerwin gets it back. Good ball for Henry Jones in centre forward position here. He's got nobody to his right. Kessel is there now on the left. Kerwin's made a very good overlap. Dono went to heads it in for Henry Jones. Good defending by Alessandro Mercado. Puts the ball out for a throw in. Henry Jones was just pulling the trigger on a sighter on goal there. But Mercado does well to clear for a throw in on that uh, far side of the field. Alex Harris will uh, take it. Finds Ethan Kessel. Alex gets it back. Finds Henry Jones. Chance to tee up the cross. It's a poor one. Scuffed clearance, but uh, the end Basildon will get it midway inside their own half with Samir Ali. Ali on this near side brings in Gage. That's good a chap- good challenge by James Mully. Mully comes forward. Mully still going. Brought down by Gage. Free kick in an interesting position. This left hand side is almost parallel to the edge of the Basildon United 18 yard box. Let's see what they can conjure up from here. There's just a little bit of afters going on on that far side between uh, Alex Harris and Clyde Samarsi that the referee needs to get a hold of. Just a little bit of pushing going on. Tempers flaring. Josh Steele's come in to uh, hopefully sort it all out. Alex Hill is nappy. And still things are going on. Boudou's now getting involved. Flailing arms with Kai Brown. And uh, tempers flaring in the uh, scorching sunshine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't quite see what, uh, what occurred there. What's, uh, what, what's, caused the, uh, what's caused the little uh, ruckus, shall we say. But uh, it all looks like to be uh, sorted out now. Referee's gone over to, uh, to start to deal with it. And it's just, just kind of dissolved itself, I think. Well, oh, Alex walked away with a big smile on his face. I could see that. And, uh, I suppose in this temper, evaporated would be the right uh, verb to use, wouldn't it? But uh, Ethan Gessel's waiting to take the kick. The referee's not going to produce a card. 
and Welling Garden City have an opportunity here with 14 minutes of the first half plus time added on remaining. It's the FA Trophy first qualifying round on 90 Minutes Live in association with Easy Shelf, our sponsors. Nil-nil here at the Bexhurst, but a chance for the home side. Ethan Kessel's going to take it. Everybody is waiting for the late run in by the look of it. They're all on the far side of the box. Plenty of height in there for the home side as the referee sounds a whistle. Kessel's free kick with the right boot curled in, bounces about, and he's gone in the back of the net. And it's Brad Watkins who scored it. Pinball in the area. Joe Bennett kicks the post in frustration. It was a good free kick by Ethan Kessel. They couldn't get hold of it. They couldn't clear. It ricocheted around the box. And there was Brad Watkins to score his second of the season and put the citizens in front. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's what happens when you, uh, you, know, you can't deal with the, uh, the ball in there and, and, and clear it. And uh, as you say, you know, it's pinballed around in there. And uh, Brad's given Welly Garden City a 1-0 lead. Well, if you're a new general, I'm not sure that they deserve it, but uh, from our position, we're very glad they've got it. Well, in Garden City 1, Basil and United nil. Brad Watkins, who uh, did such an excellent job with Burke Hampstead, of course. It's the kind of player that uh, they were very excited about bringing here. And uh, he's done the business there. That's what good set of forwards do. Pop up in the six-yard box, and it's hanging around like a pinball. So, Hazardon have had the opportunities, but they've wasted them. And it's Welling Garden City that uh, lead 1-0. Might be a bit of deja vu for their manager, Darren Manning. Last time they played both them, so of course I was saying had plenty of opportunities. But still ended up losing the game. George Marsh, long ball forwards. Alex Harris gets his head there first, ahead of Machado. Ball goes out for a throw in. Mark Weatherston is uh, still looking a bit concerned, but I'm sure he's a lot happier than he was a couple of moments ago. James Mully puts the ball out. Darren Manning can't keep it in. And uh, it will go for a throw in to the visitors from uh, Basildon United. Whoever wins this, as I was saying earlier, will either play uh, New Salamis or Lowest Off Town at home in the next round on the 23rd of uh, September. So a good incentive for both clubs to get home during the next round. Our other two clubs have both got away draws if they uh, do triumph. Flindman's flag up on this uh, near side. As uh, Samarty had got uh, offside. If uh, we're win at Hadley, there'll be a way to Biggles Wade or Stowe Market. And uh, if Hartford win at a home to Grays, they'll either go to Felix Stowe or Brentwood. So uh, travels for our two other sides. We're hoping, uh, as I always said to Brian Jennings earlier, I think we're uh, hoping to have a uh, FA Trophy hat trick. Well, one to the good so far. Brad Watkins' 32 minute goal gives Welling Garden City the lead. Here, here he is in action again on that far side. He claims that Machado got a touch to it. Referee's not interested. And Basildon will have themselves a goal kick which their goalkeeper George Marsh will take from the goal away to our left. We've got 10 minutes to go before the break here at the Bakeshurst with Welling Garden City leading by a goal to nil. Samir Ali coming very deep to get the ball, almost lost it to Kerwin, who's uh, impressed Ryan Kerwin at left back and he's come back to the club. Ball on the far side, well brought down by Henry Jones, but he's going to be uh, shoved off the ball by uh, Machado, is he? And... Uh, in the end, he's, uh, he's going to win the throw in because uh, a bit of semaphore from the uh, referee's assistant over there. Flag one. Don't know what that means. Flag one way, flag the other. What it means to us is that Welling Garden City have got a throw in, which Alex Harris will take. Finds Turner Winter. Winter back for uh, Alex on the overlap down that right hand side. Gets the ball off of uh, Sid Walker. And we'll take the throw in. North Carolina, Alex was in, wasn't he? I don't know if he's used to this kind of temperature when he was in the States. That was a soft one, though. Mark Weatherstone won't be happy with that. As uh, Donnell Winter was offside. And uh, Basildon United can get themselves out of trouble. With uh, the ball going... Uh, oh, in fact, the ball went out for a throw-in on the far side. So the throw-in to uh, be taken. Onto the head of Alex Harris. His Winter again goes down under challenge from Walker. Long ball forward from... Uh, 
Mercado. And if you're a centre forward when it's about 35 degrees out there, you might well look at your centre half and say, you expect me to chase that? Because uh, that's certainly what I would have said. Charlie Crowley, another long kick forward. This time he's got someone to aim at, and Bruno Winter goes over his head. Henry Jones will try and keep it in on the far side and does. Jones hasn't got a line in the box. Castle arriving now. Jones goes round, tries to put the ball across, but uh, totally miscues. Uh, it goes behind for a goal kick to uh, Basildon United. The half-time sequence coming up on uh, 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf. We'll be going through uh, what happened in the FA Youth Cup in uh, the week. We'll be looking at some uh, interesting facts involving the uh, town of Basildon, telling you why Charlie's going to be halfway up Kilimanjaro shortly, and uh, a few other things as well. And also the Golden Boot, which is... Uh, Really hotted up, some goals flying in at the uh, lower levels of uh, a pyramid. Quite a few going on here for AFC Welling as well. I'll tell you about those. Here's Henry Jones for Welling Garden City FC. Bods it in the box. Not well cleared. Don't know when to get up, but this time the goalkeeper George Marsh should come out and collect it fairly comfortably. Long kick forward. Voodoo will let it bounce and then get there first and just uh, touch it back. So Charlie Crowley bowls it out. Kerwin invites it to go across the halfway line. He does, making good progress. It's the left back. Pulls the ball inside, goes off gauge. Will Donnell win to get there first? He will add to the goalkeeper, but won't manage to keep the ball in play. Well, clean sheets have been hard to come by. Right, for both these teams, last home clean sheet for Welling Garden City, 7th of April which was uh, against AFC Dunstable, who are due here in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, round about the same time, actually, in terms of uh, an away clean sheet for Basildon. And uh, to that record, of course, is James Mully. Down the line for Henry Jones. Jones trying to go inside, outside Mikado. Mikado managed to get one boot in and then uh, shrugs Jones off the ball. He's pulled back and manages to win the free kick for his side right down on that uh, far side. I wonder what the order's going to be in the dressing room. Certainly won't be a hot cup of tea, will it? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I, I mean, I, th- I think if, it, if I was out there, it would be like a, a cold shower or something. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what Mark's going to say. I think, as I said before, you know, they, they need to feel, deal with that, uh, that threat that's coming from the Basildon midfield. But since, since Welling got that goal and, and went 1-0 ahead, um, they, they seem to be dealing with things a little bit better. And, and Basildon haven't really had the chances that they had early, earlier in the game, have they? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a confidence thing as well when you've uh, you know, had those two home games because they did nine goals in them, um, I guess. You know, you can look, had one of those Battleton chances gone in, you might well be in the, oh, here we go again mindset. But uh, they weathered the storm, they scored at the other end and uh, got a good amount of confidence, I guess, off of that. Rachel's out again doing the, uh, doing the work. Rachel Wong, the uh, physio, looks like Brad Watkins, I think, is it, who's uh, down there, who's uh, having the uh, treatment in the, uh, in the half. Oh, in fact, it's Ethan Kessel as he uh, gets up. Both he and Henry Jones have had a little bit of treatment. Looks like Ethan's going to be uh, okay. Another one of those uh, very sensible drinks breaks has brought uh, play to a stoppage here. And we've probably got about another 10 minutes to go. Unless you have to uh, take account, of course, of uh, that time. It doesn't look like there's going to be any movement on the bench. Ethan Kessel is gingerly making his way to uh, in front of uh, Josh Urquhart and uh, Mark. Weatherston picks up a drink and uh, I think he's going to be able to continue, is he? Well, we'll uh, keep you in progress with that. Well, in Garden City, down to 10 at the moment as uh, George Marsh restarts with a goal kick. Good header out by Josh Steele. But here's Berkey for Basildon midway inside the Welling Garden City half. Too much space as he finds Ali. Ali's cross to the far post. Good header by Alex Harris ahead of Samassi. He's Ali again, though, on this right-hand side. Goes around Kerwin. Can he pull the ball across? He can. It's a good-looking cross, and for the second time, it's Alex Harris who manages to get it away. Here's Samassi, though. Chance to pull in across from the left-hand side. Goes down under challenge. Referee points to the spot. Alex Harris with the challenge. And Basildon United have got themselves a penalty four minutes before the break. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a poor mistake from Alex there. You know, he's, he's gone round him and, and, he, and he just pulled him back. 
and uh, a- absolutely clear penalty. No argument with that at all. Well, he'd done well with the two clearances, but when the ball was on the deck, Alex was unfortunately found wanting, and Guy Brown has got the ball on the spot. Guy Brown against Charlie Growley to bring Basildon back into the game. Brown, who scored one last time out against Walthamstow. Let's see what he does here. Referee sounds a whistle. Up comes Kai Brown with a stutter and thumps it down the middle to put Basildon United level, much to the delight of their fans behind the goal. Four minutes to go before the break, plus a considerable amount of time added on for stoppages in the FA Trophy first qualifying round. And we stand at Welling Garden City 1, Basildon United 1. Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, on, on, on reflection, you know, a, sc- a scoreline of 1 all, you, you can't really argue with that. But that's a very, very poor penalty to, uh, to, to be given away. I'm sure Alex will be disappointed in himself. I'm sure Mark Weatherstone uh, won't be happy either. But um, it's, yeah, 1 all, and uh, they've, they've got to come back into it and, and go again. And he's been forced to make a uh, substitution as well. Freddie Brown is about to come on. Ethan Kessel has uh, not reappeared so they're down to 10 when that goal went in so Freddie Brown comes on for uh, Ethan Kessel so problems mounting for Mark Weatherston we go back to actually what happened just before the penalty and those two attacks was uh, they let Callum Berkey run I'll come back to that in a minute as Dono Winter fires in the shots but it goes wide of the target they left that on number 8 Callum Berkey to run so far um, in a uh, inside right channel, then find Samir Ali with more space on the right hand side. And uh, you know, there was a man to the right of us who was shouting, Come on, Welling, wake up! And I absolutely agreed with him because uh, they've just been given too much space at times in midfield of Basildon United. Long ball forward, Kerwin has to watch it go over his head. He's got Ali right next to him. Ali goes down under challenge, shouts from the uh, Basildon contingent, and uh, Ryan Kerwin's going to have a little bit of a talking to from our referee, David Nichols, and don't think it'll be any worse than that. But, uh, one of those screams always that uh, he's hopeful for a yellow card for your opponent, but I uh, don't think we're going to get one. It's going to be Marty Gage who's going to take the uh, free kick for Badledon United. We're in the last minute, but uh, bear in mind we've had the drinks breaks, so we're going to have uh, a little bit of time added on. Sid Walker makes his way up from the back for the bees. 1-1 one, one here at the Bexhurst. Gage taking his time. We'll take it now with the right boot. Headed out well by Kerwin to the edge of the area. Here's the dangerous Samasi. Samasi going to his left hand side. Got Alex Harris in front of him again. Managed to get the ball across the box. Bounces down off uh, the chest I think of uh, Brad Watkins in the end and uh, Buda who's gone down inside the Welling Garden City six-yard box, so we'll have another uh, delay in play, and uh, Rachel will have to run out on that uh, far side. In fact, he's got himself back up fairly quickly, so uh, that uh, run from the Welling Garden City physio could be to uh, no regards. Substitution just being announced by... uh, our friend uh, Phil Ravitz from the uh, stadium announcer here. Just letting us know that Freddie, Freddie Brown's come in and really playing on this uh, left-hand side. Where Ethan Kessel was uh, playing. We'll be talking to Mark Weatherston after the game, of course. We'll inquire as to uh, the welfare of Ethan, having been uh, forced off in this uh, first half. He'll be... Uh, Match commentary highlights, the thoughts of Mark Weatherston and, of course, our YouTube highlights will uh, all be online uh, tomorrow for you to uh, watch. Uh, And also, dare I say it, there'll be something on TikTok as well. I'm looking forward to that as uh, Joe Bennett will put the ball forward. Samir Ali on this near side, beaten by Kerwin, but it's Berkey again. Koloski does well this time to close down the space in front of the number eight. And uh, bypasses him to find Donnell Winter. Donnell Winter's beaten, though. A good challenge came in from Berkey. Buda, who's got it deep, deep inside his own half. He's Joshua Steele. He didn't look too certain about it. Surrounded by players. Steele's in trouble here, but in the end, the big number five does well to win himself a free kick. He had a two-on-one there with Kai Brown and Marty Gage, and he didn't look comfortable at all. But uh, in the end, manages to win himself 
a uh, free kick. Just about two minutes played over the top here. Charlie Crowley will put the ball back to uh, James Koloski on the uh, halfway line. Charlie gets it back. Big punt upfield. Underneath it is Henry Jones struggling with Bennett. Ball comes off Bennett's head, so it's going to be a throw in the Welling Garden City, which Ryan Kerwin will take. Referee's had a look at his watch. The dying moments of the uh, first 45 here at the Bankshurst. Standing at 1-1. Ryan Kerwin gets the ball short to Freddie Jones. Here's Henry Jones on the edge of the area. And so Alex Harris goes in, didn't get it, but uh, Mully does well to win the ball. And in the end, there's a clash in midfield. A real clunging, crunching crash between Sam Brogan and James Mully. Both of which have, uh, well, actually, Brogan's getting up. And it's the Welling Garden City skipper who's had the worst of that one. James Mully, although the referee is signalling, I think he's going to be OK. But, uh, that means uh, a little bit more is going to be added on at the end of the first half here. And the very busy Rachel Wong comes on yet again to uh, give some uh, treatment to uh, the skipper, James Mully. I hope they've been giving Rachel a drink on that. Uh, that I, I, I think she's well. going to deserve one. Oh, I think she does. Honest, she's <laughs> so we always mention the physios here on uh, 90 Minutes Live in association with Easy Shelf because there are so many unsung heroes behind the scenes of non-league football that uh, keep the wheels turning and make sure that uh, we can turn up and give you uh, non-league football coverage every Saturday and the players can get out there and uh, do their bit. So uh, and, uh, thumbs up to my mate Tony Ingenzo who always puts something on uh, Twitter on a Friday where you're going to be today and we always uh, reply and tell Tony where we'll be doing our... Uh, live match commentary I know he's been a really good standard bearer for uh, non-league football for many many years as he's got that book that he compiles of all the non-league football matches that he's been to but uh, I have totally lost count you know, I've got, got a little app called football footballology and look at all my games and think yeah well Absolutely nothing compared to Tony. I think he'd explode that up, actually, if he, if he had it. I've added a lot of games. Obviously, since I got the app, I've, you know, do every game there. But uh, I've added, you know, games I've been to, you know, before. Yeah. Then. But uh, I, I know I'm missing some, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an interesting thing to... Another, another thing, we like stats, don't we, Pete? So of course. A little stat for us to, uh, to keep an eye on. Most definitely. But uh, as we must say, other apps are available. As uh, the ball breaks midway inside the Belgian United half, so we might see rather aimlessly straight to Ryan Kerwin. Kerwin's chip ball down this side. But, uh, it's Berkey who gets there first in front of Freddie Brown. Berkey's ball chipped forward. Gage didn't control it very well. Koloski gets a boot in, but Basildon maintained possession until Berkey skies it. On to the roof of the stand. Referee's played four minutes over the top as another look at the uh, watch. As Ryan Kerwin will prepare to take the throw in on this uh, near side of the field. Welling Garden City 1, Battles United to 1. Brad Watkins from inside the six-yard box for Welling. Kai Brown from the penalty spot for the Bees. But here's Brad Watkins. Watkins tries to play the ball in for Dernell Winter, but uh, it's Machado who manages to get it clear. And uh, could be an opportunity here if Gage can bring out some Marcy on that far side. But Alex Harris was alert to it. Puts the ball back to uh, Charlie Crowley finds Josh Steele and puts him in another one of those situations that he doesn't want to be in but he does well to feed it out this near side for Ryan Kerwin but the ball goes out of play and Basildon will have a throw in still the half continues referee's had another look at the watch Joe Bennett will uh, take the throw in for the visitors Bennett tries to put it down the line but uh, Finds a substitute, Freddie Brown, in the way. Then it will take the throw in again. Just shy midway inside the Welling Garden City half. Kai Brown misses it. Boudou just uses a bit of strength to ease him off the ball. But Ali comes away with it. Here's Kai Brown. Clear run on Charlie Crowley. And Basildon United go in front. In the dying seconds of the first half. And Welling have only got themselves to blame. 
James Mully stands, hands out, oh, poor defending, and it's Welling Garden City 1, Battledon United 2. Yeah, I mean, you can see from the looks from the players how disappointed they are to, uh, to concede that goal. Poor defending there, Charlie left with no chance. Kai Brown just you know, takes it to his side, takes it around and, and takes him to the uh, back of the net to uh, give them the lead just before half-time. Well, Kai Brown, another double. He got a double last time out against Walthamstow. One was a penalty, and he's got another double here in the first half. One being a penalty, and the other one there. Well, he only felt sorry for Charlie Crowley. Couldn't do anything about it at all. So, uh, Kai Brown scores his fourth of the season, and it all looked bright for Mark Weatherston's team. But it's... Uh, not in terms of the sun, but in terms of the football match, it's all gone a little bit dark and gloomy. But uh, the manager will want to get his team in and talk to them at half-time. And a half-time that's uh, slow in coming. We've played seven minutes over the top now. So, uh, good job they haven't going to have tea at half-time. It'll be well stewed by now. But, uh, Joe Bennett will take the throw in to the side that are leading here by two goals to one, having come from behind. But uh, in fairness, having had the best opportunities in the opening period, and well, they've got to make sure they don't concede another one. As Brad Watkins controls it on the halfway line, gets it away from Freddie Brown. Good ball forward for Henry Jones, can't control it. And on the edge of the area, Marsh has to come out quickly away from Henry Jones. High up and under, which uh, James Mully doesn't know where it's gone. And uh, in the end, it's on that far side on the head of Alex Harris and goes out for a throw in to uh, the visitors plenty of up and unders I suppose for the next uh, couple of weeks and then with the Rugby uh, Union World Cup England playing later against uh, Argentina, the England football team playing later against the Ukraine plenty of sport happening Ireland uh, were playing Romania I think they are at the moment as uh, Samasi comes forward left hand side, it's a team in green that are doing well here as well as uh, ball is brought back and uh, Koloski, well it bounces off him well and can't get hold of the ball here's Kai Brown, outside the area chips the ball where Gage has pulled wide to the right, the ball's over his head so he's going to have to keep it in play shows too much to Freddie Brown who does well and finds on this near side just a little bit of respite via Ryan Kerwin Kerwin's long ball forward though only finds Sid Walker Berkey puts it forward, Sid Walker to Samir Ali I think Basildon fancied their chances with another one here. But Henry Jones will collect it and find Kowalski. We played nine minutes over the top. Alex Harris forward, long ball onto the head of Mercado, who's not put a long put a foot wrong so far as the number four. So Marcy goes down under challenge. Well, he got a chance now. Henry Jones coming forward. And uh, the aforementioned Spaniard gets in the way, but Welling will get it back. Don't know, Winter goes down on the edge of the box. It's scuffed clear by Bennett, only as far as James Mully. Mully finds Brad Watkins. Watkins has got uh, Henry Jones outside him. That's where Mully's going to go. Jones miscontrols it to start with, and once again, it's Alec. Handaro Mercado, who's making things very difficult and comes away with the ball. He's had a super first half as the Spaniard. Long ball forward and uh, Budu will let that one bounce and watch it go out of play. That's the final action of the first half. They had 10 minutes added on by our referee David Nicholson. Started brightly for Welling Garden City but has ended with a score at a half-time in the FA Trophy first qualifying round. Welling Garden City 1, Basildon United 2. I, I, I don't think uh, you know, Mark Weatherston or Welling Garden City can really complain too much about the, uh, about the scoreline so far either. You know, Basildon created the uh, better chances in the, uh, the first half of the first half. Say, and, then, and then two poor goals to, uh, to give away after they've taken the, uh, taken the lead. So uh, plenty for uh, Mark Riverstone to stay, let Mark Riverstone to uh, stay in the dressing room at half time, and uh, I'm sure he'll give the boys his point of view. Yeah, I'm sure he will, and uh, certainly needs something in the second half because, uh, to be fair, home side have been second best, and uh, the away side deserve their advantage at the break. Let's tell you a little bit about, about the away side then from uh, Basildon. 
which is in uh, Essex, one of eight new towns which were created in the south-east of England after the uh, passing of the New Towns Act, which was uh, way back at the end of the 1940s. But what you might know Basildon for more than anything else is since March 2010, the, uh, the white Basildon sign, which is styled on the same one they have in Hollywood, a little bit smaller, it's one-ninth of the size, and it welcomes visitors to the town of Basildon. Perhaps doesn't welcome the residents of Basildon too much when they realise it costs the local council £90,000 to put up. But uh, there you go. So if you're anywhere near Basildon, you should be able to see the white sign. It's also home of the uh, South Essex uh, Gymnastics Club, where Olympic gold medalist uh, Max Whitlock does his training. Max, who uh, comes from Manuel Hempstead in Hertfordshire, of course, that does his uh, training in Essex in Basildon. It was setting for the BBC TV series White Gold that might mean something to someone who watched it, but I didn't. But uh, if you did, that was uh, all set in uh, Basildon. And uh, it's the home of uh, New Holland Tractors as well, which have been based there for 50 years. And also the Towngate Theatre, which was opened in uh, 1968. And at the Towngate Theatre on the 27th of September, an evening with a man of Essex, Francis Rossi of Status Quo. I'm sure there'll be some uh, very interesting stories told on that particular uh, evening. At the, uh, at the theatre there in uh, Battleton, like the ice cream as well. Oh, I know his, his family sold it a long time ago. Famous residents of uh, Basildon. We're talking of music. A lot of music uh, has happened from uh, Basildon. Vince Clark and Alison Moyo put them together in the 80s. So were uh, Yazoo. Alison Moyo went off to a uh, great uh, solo career, of course, still going. And uh, Vince Clark, still uh, a member of Erasure. Also, the Bash Mode, the band were formed and uh, all came from Battledon and also did Scott Robinson who's a singer in five for those of you that know about those things uh, also the other people that are famous a lot of famous people from Battledon actually Stuart Bingham former world snooker champion Terry Marsh former light heavyweight world boxing champion carry on actress Joan Sims Ellie Taylor comedian Denise Van Outen and uh, then just a couple, and I, I'm not sure which one of these two would be more famous. We'll go with Brian Bello. Now, you all know who Brian Bello is, don't you? Everybody nods. Oh, well, um, yeah, Big uh, Brother. Hey, hey, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Simon knows more than me. He won Big Brother in 2007. And uh, then Dispit actually writes for some uh, celebrity gossip newspaper now, I read. So uh, there you go. Good luck to him. But the one I love, and uh, I think the football club should get on this one, because Keith Chapman, the man who created Bob the Builder, was born in Basildon. Now, wouldn't those shirts look great with a picture of Bob the Builder on? Come on. You know, Basildon United, can we fix it? It's, you know, it's it's an opportunity that's gone begging for me, that one. (laughs) That would be brilliant. <laughs> so uh, there was um, FA Youth Cup action in uh, in the week involving uh, our three uh, local clubs. Uh, one disappointment, two good wins. Disappointment, sadly, game here where Welling Garden City drew 3-3 with May and Baker. But uh, May and Baker went through 4-3 on penalties against the uh, young citizens. Good win for Hartford. Won 3-0 at Buggerhurst Hill. Sonny Coughlin Brown got two. Billy uh, Mardell Smith got a penalty as the uh, young Hartford side went on their way. And also an equally good win for Ware at Watson Park. They beat Romford 4-1 with uh, Gabby Chaps and uh, Frankie Samford scoring two apiece for uh, the Ware youth side. So we'll follow their progress in the uh, FA Youth Cup. That was the uh, preliminary round, by the way. Uh, First qualifying round is uh, the next call for them. Coming up on 90 Minutes Live, this time next week, it's going to be FA Cup action. Already looking forward to it, as I'm sure all the residents of Ware are. FA Cup second qualifying round, Ware against Chelmsford City. We're hoping they can go on another one of those uh, famous cup runs. And uh, why not? Two teams met pre-season, of course. But I uh, don't think you can tell much on that one, although where I did uh, win the game. And uh, so many thanks to, uh, talking of stat, stat man himself, Steve King, who sent me a newspaper gutting of last time the two teams met in the FA Cup in the week. So. You, you, you sound about... Statman, our, 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 our very own uh, Steve King. I was listening to Talk Sport last Sunday, 
and they were saying, I think it was Sam Matterface, they was calling him, they did a little clip of him, Statman, and guess what they played before they played all these stats that he gave out? Go on. Scatman. Oh. I wonder where they got that idea from. Who was there first? <laughs> Who was there first? We'll have them saying live at 2.55 next, won't we? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so uh, that will be uh, a really, really interesting afternoon. We will be live from 2.55 at uh, Wadsham Park. Really looking forward to that one. Where we'll be after that? Well, that really depends on uh, the results of uh, games in the FA Trophy, results of games in the FA Cup. We will be somewhere on the 23rd of uh, September. We can promise you that. But uh, at the moment, we're not sure where. Just uh, keep ahead head of our uh, socials instagram facebook twitter uh tiktok we are uh, on the lot so if you know what's want to know what's happening we'll have a chat in the week with us here on 90 minutes live in association with uh, easy shelf and get yourself on uh, one or two of those which will uh, be really nice well at the moment on the 23rd we could be watching Arthur down because at half time in the FA Trophy with our other two sides Hadley to wear nil though for the thoughts of Paul Halsey which uh, if they think it's hot in that dressing room before half time then uh, I've got a feeling at half time it might be absolutely <laughs> scorching Hartford won um, Grey's Athletic nil so uh, Cardozo's got the goal for uh, Hartford. So uh, good news for uh, Ben Hurd and uh, his side. If they hold on to that, uh, as I was saying, their draw will either take them to Felixstowe or uh, Brentwood Town. So that will be uh, interesting to keep an eye on uh, what's happening uh, there. We've got uh, some other uh, scores also from the FA Trophy. Alsbury United nil, Bedford Town one. Bedford were uh, the Southern League's team of the month, weren't they, as uh, voted in August, and quite rightly so. Congratulations to them. Kings Langley 1, Cambridge City 1, Killington 2, North Lee 0. They'll be liking that one at Killington. Local Derby, Waltham Abbey 2 at Switch Wanderers 0. Leighton Town 1, Kempston Rovers 0. And Redbridge won Stotfold uh, nil. Over the page, Biggleswade won Stowmarket one. The winners of that will play either Hadley or Ware. At the moment, it was like my beat Hadley. Biggleswade Town won Berry Town nil. Frome Town won Sirencester nil. And uh, Haybridge Swifts 2, Barton Rovers 1. Thanks to uh, Simon for. Uh, those latest um, we've also got one in Spartan South Midlands as well Real Bedford 3 Sobbridgeworth 0 and uh, what's that one? National, National League South National League South sorry Torquay United 0 Chelmsford City who will be watching this time next week Clarets aren't they Chelmsford City we'll be watching them at Watson Park next week that one is 0-0 uh, nil, nil. Takes me neatly onto the Golden Boot, where the uh, 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf Golden Boot. Goals are flying in for our uh, local teams. We've got two players on nine now at the top. Charlie Yearwood, who scored a few of them here for AFC Welling, and uh, Kamari Collington, who scored a few down the road for Hatfield Town, who play their games, of course, at uh, Hartford Town's ground. Eben Mabona has got eight for Hatfield Town. Then a couple of players on six. Harry Watson of Buntingford and Jamie Marshall of uh, Hartford Heath. And then on five, our first appearance of a step four player, Dernell Winter, here for Welling Garden. City has got five. Louis Debenham for Westmill has got five. Well, there's no surprise there, although he did get them all in one game. And uh, Kendall Gianfi of AFC William w- Wellin has also got five, as has Billy Skinner of St Margaret's Bray. So we'll keep you in touch with who's uh, doing what in our golden boot. And now, really important one, if you have seen our uh, socials, you will have noticed that uh, we put a link on there for a Just Giving page for uh, Becky and Charlie Climb Killy for Cancer, which uh, is going to be running between the 15th of September and the 27th of September. And uh, Charlie, of course, Welling Garden City's goalkeeper, making his 100th appearance before he goes off with Becky to uh, climb the highest single freestanding mountain uh, above sea level in the world. They'll arrive on the 16th of September and on day seven they'll begin their ascent which will take them uh, six days and it's all being done in memory of uh, Becky's mum, Nan, Granny and Grandad and for Auntie Caroline and Auntie Helen who are both in remission as well. So all you need to do is go to fund raise dot cancer research uk 
dot org. Okay, put in Becky and Charlie Climate Killy, and that's the GoFunding page. Uh, I haven't looked this morning, they raised four thousand one hundred and sixty pounds yesterday for something that's uh, very close to my heart and I'm sure very close to everybody so uh, thumbs up and uh, Charlie says he'll be keeping us in touch with how things are going on Twitter so uh, good luck Becky and Charlie yeah 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 we wish you uh, both very best of luck as Pete said you know the, uh, the link is on our socials we'll we'll tweet that out again uh, you know at some point uh, during the week and you know Charlie you know a, a great supporter of us uh, since we've been going, you know, a good friend of the, uh, good friend of Night Minutes Live, and we really do wish you uh, both all the best, and we'll be sure to uh, keep an eye out on how you're doing. Yeah, we all really look forward to that uh, with interest. I, mean, I, I made a donation, and it was probably within two minutes. Charlie had messaged me back, saying, "Oh, thanks for that. I'll let you know how we uh, get on on Twitter." So uh, we will keep you in touch during our half-time sequence for the next uh, couple of weeks. Going to have to ask him what the temperature is going to be like up there, because I, I assume it isn't going to be 35 degrees. But uh, I, I assume just a little less. <laughs> I, 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 I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be going, you know, you, you think that as well, and, you know, the air pressure and, you know, that as well. I mean, it, that, it's going to make things so hard for them, you know, climbing that high. And, uh, you know, if, if it's hot as well, that would just make it doubly hard. And, you know, like you say, you know, it's a fantastic effort. You know, it's you know, six days to get up there as well. I mean, that's, mm. yeah, that's, uh, that's some going. So, uh, yeah, very, very best of luck to, uh, to you both. Lovely couple as well. I mean... I've met, I've met uh, Charlie's wife uh, a few times, and uh, she's a lovely lady as well. And uh, you know, absolutely uh, admire you both for what you are doing. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, very best of luck. Absolutely, and great to be able to follow you here on uh, 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf. And uh, well, the uh, <laughs> the officials from Basel United are making their way across the pitch, but. Uh, Going at that speed, the way Darren Manning's going with the physio, I think we could still be here about 8 o'clock, but uh, I'm sure they'll speed it up. Uh, just to come on, I want to watch the England rugby game. So, uh, Mark Weatherston going across as well. I mean, you, say, you say that, you've got, you say you've, got, you know, you've got the Rugby World Cup coming up, you've got England football team playing, you've got, you've got the Cricket World Cup as well, which uh, I'll, I'll be glued to. So, I mean, we've got the Ryder Cup coming up at the end of the month. It's, it's, it's well, I've, it's, I've got the US Open women's singles, yeah, finally men's go. singles tomorrow. There you go. You've, yeah, it's uh, yeah, huh. fully uh, plenty of uh, action to uh, to keep us occupied. But the main action for now is here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this will be the kind of time that Mrs. Mrs. H feeds pizzas under the door. You know, the study upstairs where the telly is. Are you all right in there? Yeah, yeah it's okay. It's just the US Open. So, uh, so players yet to uh, rejoin us here. One one. Story of the first half, really. Basildon United missing a number of chances. Charlie Crowley making a number of really fine saves. Before it was Wellingard and City who went in front when Brad Watkins poked one in from inside the six-yard box after a considerable amount of pinball in the box. But uh, it didn't take uh, Basildon too long to get back on uh, level terms. Only uh, 11 minutes when Alex Harris brought down uh, Clyde Samarsi inside the box. No doubt about it, as far as the band was, was concerned. And uh, Guy Brown made no doubt about it by thumping it in the back of the net. And then uh, after we played uh, a good uh, six minutes of time added on, it was Kai Brown again found himself alone in the area, one-on-one with Charlie Crowley, and thumped in his fourth goal of the season. So that's how we stand at half-time in the FA trophy first qualifying round just having a look round see if there's any changes and I don't think that uh, either team well in were forced to make one in the first half and uh, unfortunately Ethan Gessel limped off to be replaced by Freddie Brown but uh, apart from that it's going to be uh, as you were in the second half Charlie Crowley uh, in goal uh, the two fullbacks, Alex Harris and Ryan Kerwin, making his uh, second Welling Garden City debut. Two centre backs, Josh Steele and Yazin Budahu. In uh, centre of midfield, James Kolowski and uh, James Mully. And then uh, playing wide now, Freddie Brown on one side, Henry Jones on the other. And through the middle, top scorer, Dernell Winter. And uh, goal scorer this afternoon, Brad Watkins. As far as. Uh, Basildon are concerned. I'll take you through their team lineup when we get a uh, 
convenient uh, stoppage in play. Welling Garden City are getting it back underway, kicking from left to right. They trail here 2-1. Long ball on that far side meets the head of uh, Samir Ali on by Freddie Brown. Ali finds Gage and uh, Ali then punts it forward. Kai Brown would have gone offside if it uh, would have been near him. But uh, the ball out for a throw in on that uh, side of the field. Kai Brown back to uh, his skipper, Kai Jude. Forward by uh, Sid Walker. But that's a good challenge by Kerwin. Kerwin goes down on the uh, centre line and it will be a free kick to Welling Garden City. So George Marsh in goal for uh, Basilton. The right back is uh, Jamie Bennett. On the uh, left side is Kai Jude. Two central defenders, Alejandro Machado and uh, Sid Walker. They've got uh, Sam Brogan and Callum Berkey anchoring the... uh, Midfield and then uh, Kai Brown, Samir Ali, Clyde Samazo, and uh, Marty Gage making up a uh, front line, which has given Welling Garden City considerable problems so far in the match. Kerwin's going to take the throw in on this near side for the citizens. Need to get in this one sooner rather than later. Kolaski lets it go under his boot, and uh, Machado will find some Marty on this near side, but uh, James Mully is there first. Mully back, forces Charlie Crowley outside his area and Charlie's high kick forward will land on the head of Henry Jones but uh, thumped forward by Jude. Still finds James Mully. Mully will uh, have to go backwards because Samaras is in front of him and then turns it all the way back to his goalkeeper Charlie Crowley. Charlie's long kick far side of the field is fairly easily read in the end by Sam Brogan. But... Uh, Getting some work for uh, Bennett to do on the far side, and he does it well against Freddie Brown. Puts it forward. Kai Brown is onside, but uh, Charlie Crowley has come out to collect it. Another close run thing, but I think the officials just about got it right. Charlie taking his time then. Can't see too much change in the way Welling Garden City approach this second period. Henry Jones perhaps has uh, bowled over a little more to the right hand side. But uh, it's Basildon in possession, another ball forward, but uh, nobody there to collect it. And Charlie Crowley will come out on that far side of the field. Basildon reached third qualifying round of this, uh, 21-22. And they went out at uh, Uxbridge, were beaten, as I was saying earlier, in the uh, first qualifying round by Lowestoff. Best they've ever done in an FA competition is they got the quarterfinal in the FA Vars, but that was back in 1981. As uh, Koloski is forced to go backwards and then finds Josh Steele inside the centre circle. Steele's got Kerwin on the overlap on the right, decides to go left and float it into the box. Good header by Guy Jude and uh, here's Mikado again. He'll chip it forward, trying to head of Steele who just heads it out midway inside a Basildon United a half. Well, Garden City substitutes by the way that are still there. Donovan Green, the uh, young goalkeeper, Adam Pollock, Ryan Dougherty, Mark Weatherston and Bailey Stevenson. You would imagine that Stevenson would be one they might look to to pep things up a little bit if the score remains the same. Gage's ball forward, Ali was caught in his heels and it goes all the way through to uh, Charlie Crowley. Charlie's kick, long one, lands on the edge of the 18-yard box but uh, Mercado again. Who, uh, certainly has looked a player above this level for me, the number four. I think he's had an excellent game. He's there first to react again. He skies the ball away from Dunno Winter. Headed on by James Mully. Winter goes up. Can't really get too much purchase on it, but Brad Watkins made something of it with the overhead kick. And Basildon will have to clear here, and finally they do with Brogan. It's uh, still bouncing around inside that area on that uh, side. But it's Samir Ali. Pulls the ball cleverly inside to Gage. Everyone's onside for the moment. Samarzi isn't now. But the ball will be played through to him by Guy Brown. He was offside, surely. But the linesman flag will stay down. The ball put across the box. And the linesman signals for a corner. Well, surely, in the new ruling, which I absolutely hate, that flag should have gone up for offside. Well, yeah, I'd have thought so. I mean, that, that's the second time the, uh, the linesman's... Uh, n- not flagged for uh, uh, what we say is a clear offside 
and you know the fans in the stands tend to us uh, tend to agree with us as well. And yeah, why is flags not gone up? I really don't know. Well, they're going to use that rule. Let's stick to it. Uh, but, uh, it's a corner for Basildon. Nonetheless, can be taken by Marty Gage on that uh, far side. See what they can do for uh, from this one. Uh, Berkey comes short, doesn't want that one. High one lofted into the box. Everybody goes up, misses it, and Gowen gets it clear. As far as Henry Jones on that far side, goes up with Bennett. And Bennett once again shows more strength than the Welling man, although Henry Jones will bring it down and does want himself a free kick for the challenge by uh, Callum Berkey on the half high line. Freddie Brown wants to get on with it, tries to release Watkins, but. Uh, goalkeeper's uh, positioning was good Brad Watkins went down in a heap and he's still down inside the uh, Basildon 18 yard area feeling his right ankle meanwhile there was an offside in front of us here so uh, Watkins certainly felt that it was in fact his left ankle that he's feeling and uh, got a feeling that he might uh, require some treatment there were two involved there. It was uh, the skipper Kai Jude and the goalkeeper George Marsh. I'm not quite sure which one um, left a little bit on Brad Watkins, but someone did. But uh, he's a big lad and he's back up and limping away. So the referee is going to uh, restart the game here as Charlie Crowley will take the free kick for Willing Garden City. He's about uh, 10 yards shy of the halfway line is Charlie with the orange shirt and the white boots. Charlie, long ball forward to the edge of the area. Up they go. It's headed back, but so once again, Gage was a quick to react. Back in by James Mully. Here's Henry Jones. Was that a foul on Bennett? Yes, it was, says the referee. And so it's going to be a free kick to Basildon on the edge of the area. Ship it out to Callum Burkey on this near side. It's Samasi who's caused all sorts of problems to Mercado. Mercado's long ball forward, looking for a run from the back of Brogan. His gauge, but uh, Boudou did well to get in the way, but he's given the ball away to Sid Walker. Walker on the far side finds the back pedalling Ali. Ali manages to go round Kerwin. Here's Samir Ali onto the left boot. Samir Ali still going. Plays the ball. Well, he had Berkey across the box. Didn't use him. He has now on the, th- the opportunity's gone. And uh, Oh, chip four by James Mully, looking for Brad Watkins. Watkins is there on the edge of his area. He's on his own at the moment. He's waiting for the cavalry. He may not need them. Slips the ball into Henry Jones, right-hand side of the area. Jones chips it across. And just as Dernell Winter was coming in on the far post, it's headed out by Joe Bennett. Here's Gage. Gage's ball forwards. Ooh, could have had Welling Garden City in trouble. But in the end, it was uh, Brogan who couldn't get hold of it. He's got hold of it now, though, on the halfway line. The Battleton United down the line, looking for Samir Ali. Brogan's continued his run. He's got bodies to aim at in the box. Brogan's going to get it into the box. Boudou gets in the way, but an up and under of a clearance is Samir Ali who brings it down. Oh, just squeaked clear by Boudou. But it is Samassi again. Samassi onto the left foot, straight into the chest of Charlie Crowley. Danger signs every time the number 11 gets the ball. And Charlie Crowley once again was solidly behind it. But uh, still feel, Simon, that, that Mark Weatherston's got to change this somehow. Yeah, yeah, I think he definitely needs to uh, to do something. Just just the threat that they're having you know, down, down these wings and, and through the centre from from uh, from that midfield. He really needs to do something to uh, to deal with it. Otherwise, Willie aren't going to get back into the game. Well, maybe he's heard me. It's Bailey Stevenson's got his top off and he's about to come on. So uh, that will be a change, an attacking change for uh, our home side. We have to wonder whether Nicky Ironton was wired in, didn't we, on that far side? I it might be something to do with that dugout, I don't know. But uh, Bailey Stevenson is uh, doing stretches and will come on. So on that uh, far side... But on this near side, it's the dangerous Samasi again. Gage made himself a bit of space and did it well on the far side, though Cohen should manage to clear and does. Brad Watkins, who's worked hard up there as a number nine, but uh, on that occasion he's given the ball away, but uh, Cohen managed to get there first and just goes down on the challenge from Bennett, who protests his innocence to the referee's assistant. 
but uh, it's going to be a free kick to Welling Garden City. Nine minutes gone, second and a half here at the Vegas Hurst on 90 Minutes Live in association with Easy Shelf, with Peter Hill and Simon Alamandi bringing you set for football, as we will be every Saturday throughout uh, the season. Here's Welling Garden City once more on that far side, but the hard-working Watkins who fires it in. But, uh, in the end, he waited just a little bit for it to come down, and uh, it ricochets wide of the goalpost. There's uh, a couple of subs for uh, Basildon United beginning to uh, have a bit of a uh, warm up. At the moment, I don't think they need to do a lot. Because Darren Manning's done a good job on his side, and here's Samir Ali. Could make it worse here for Welling Garden City. Ali's in the box. Ali pulls it across the box when surely he should have gone on himself. Wow, he had every opportunity there. It was almost a three-on-one on Joshua Steele. And uh, I don't know whether Ali thought his teammate was further forward than he was, but surely he should have had a go there. Well, I, I mean, that, that would have been the, uh, the easier option as, you know, as far as I saw things. But, uh, I, I don't know what, to, what, to, uh, what his train of thought was there. Huh? Bailey Stevenson is prowling up and down on that far side. He's, he's, he's training top back on, I think. Well, one thing I will point out as well, Pete, you, you saying about the Basildon United um, subs warming down. They're warming down on this uh, left-hand side, which is the uh, side where the linesman is. They should be down the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, quite agree. As uh, Dono Winter goes up, doesn't win the ball, though, and on the halfway line is Samir Ali playing the increasing part in this game, the number nine. His ball, though... Sends Gage wide on that far side. Basildon still in possession, though. Gage tries to turn inside. Kerwin gets the ball across the box. Away by Alex Harris to the edge of the area where Dernell Winter will pick it up for the Citizens. Kolowski almost trips over the ball and Dernell Winter gets it forward. Looking for Brad Watkins. Looked to get a bit of a shove in the back. He thought he did, but here's Henry Jones. Henry Jones, he's all on his own. He's got James Mully coming up on this right-hand side. And who else? Uh, Alejandro Mercado. As goes down, wins his side a free kick. And, uh, well, the number four did his job there. And uh, I was saying earlier, Simon, I, I mean, no disrespect to level four, but he looks above this level, doesn't he, Magada? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's been a fantastic uh, player today. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, sometimes, you know, you, 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 can't, you, you can't always tell, you know, from, from, uh, from one game. But uh, he, 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 he does look too strong for this level. Sometimes you can just see it, can't you? Here's Samati, who's looked too strong all afternoon with a clear run on goal and puts in number three for Basildon United. And surely the icing on an FA Trophy cake. 12 minutes of the second half gone. Welling Garden City found out again at the back. And Klein Samasi gets himself on the score sheet. And it's Welling Garden City 1, Basildon United 3. Well, I mean, there's only so many times you can give them all that space and all that running down the left-hand side. It happened so many times in the first half. It's happened here again. And finally, they've made Welling pay the price and uh, they've gone 3-1 up. And that, you, with, with all the mistakes, with all the times it's happening from the first half, you've got to learn from them and you've got to deal with it. And that's what Welling and Garden City have failed to do. Yeah, didn't learn at all. Substitution's about to be made, but uh, I've got a feeling, and there's something dramatic happens here, it could be too little, too late already. It's going to be the number seven, Henry Jones, who's uh, he's worked hard but hasn't really had a lot of luck on this right hand side. He's going to go off, and Bailey Stevenson is going to come on. Stevenson's got a couple of goals this season, and, uh, well rated striker in his first season with uh, Welling Garden City. You do wonder, though, it's often the case, it's strange with Mark Weatherston because uh, he's uh, been a defender, he's played over 400, nearly 500 games, I think, for Wingate and Finchley. Cracking defender in non-league football. And yet he's got a team here that have conceded 5-4-3 and three in their three home games. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it's just really strange to me that, uh, you know, that will happen. Well, well, normally you'd expect you know, a, a manager that's been a defender to have a, a very strong defensive unit and not, you know, not, so, uh, not so great going forward. And uh, you know, likewise, you know, you've got a, uh, an attacking manager. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't seem to have, uh, have managed to get this, uh, this defence organised so far. 
Yeah, and I suppose that you can double up with Josh Urquhart, who was, was a very accomplished defender, played step three at Harlow and Potter's Bar. So, uh, you know, an easy assistant manager. Anyway, Wellington City got a mountain to climb here. Long ball by Joshua Steele on that far side, which Freddie Brown won't keep in. And it very much looks, at the moment, that Basildon uh, United will be uh, facing either New Salamis or Lowest Off Town. But, uh, it's Lowest Off, wouldn't have been a bad place to be this afternoon. It's very nice in Norfolk in the week. Didn't have the really hot weather that we had down here. But, uh, watching the, the uh, seals at Horsey Gap. But, uh, back to life with a bump here with our team 3-1 behind in the FA Trophy first qualifying round which will mean that uh, Welling Garden City will uh, not be in action after they go to Biggersway Town next weekend until the 26th of September and AFC Dunstable come here and we know what good football inside they are as uh, Kerwin tries to pull the ball across but uh, block is finally made by the skipper Kai Jude and Welling Garden City have a throw in which Ryan Kerwin will take on that uh, far side of the field. Bailey Stevenson looking for his first touch and he gets it. Back to Kerwin. Back to Stevenson. Stevenson puts the ball across the box. Hit out fairly easily by Berkey. One thing Wellin do not want to do is let this get out of hand. As having lost home games 5-2, 4-1 and now being 3-1 down they do not want to concede anymore. And so the ball punted up in the air. Here's Bailey Stevenson on the edge of the area. But, uh, once again, Berkey, calm as you like, goes to his goalkeeper, George Marsh. James Mully heads it back. But Berkey will uh, get it. Neat and tidy, the number eight's been this afternoon. Here he is again. Plays the ball forward on this near side. Hello, Andrew Mercado. Mercado's ball forward by Gage to Samarsi. Samarsi's in again here. Right hand side of the box, pulls it across, Gage, oh, just side footed it. And in the end, Samir Ali was in an offside position. It is almost getting too easy for them. Yeah, again, another breakdown this, this same side, and it's, it's it, they're get, getting caught out again and again and again. And it's, if, if we can see that, surely Mark Weatherstone can see it, you know, they, you know and it's, it's something that. Uh, that they really need to deal with, otherwise you know, there, there could be another couple of battles and goals here. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's pushed Donald Winter into the number 10 position to match his shirt, but uh, he's hardly got in the game as the, uh, the top scorer. And uh, I think Battledon have been very astute in the way they've defended as well, as uh, Samarsi on this near side almost gets onto the ball, but Alex Harris will collect it and prepare to uh, take the uh, throw in. I mean, really not too much on the bench, it's got to be said, for Mark Weatherston to play with either. As uh, Sid Walker puts it forward, looking for the run of Alley, and uh, good positioning again by Charlie Crowley to uh, thump the ball forward. Walker on that far side of the field is Samir Alley. Oh, he's giving it away. Stevenson midway inside the half. Here's Brad Watkins. Watkins, oh, could have gone round the goalkeeper, but George Marsh saves with his feet. There was the opportunity for Welling Garden City to get themselves back into the game and spurned by Brad Watkins. Yeah, he's tried to put it over the keeper there. Isn't he? I think the ball had a little bit too much pace for him to uh, be able to control it and take it around for him. So he's tried to uh, just, just put it around the keeper and uh, you know, he made a great save with his feet. So chance goes big in for Welling Garden City to get back into this one. 18 minutes, second half gone. We will... I'm sure I have at least five, six over the top with the drinks break. Probably about due about now, I would think. Next time we get a break, I think the referee might sound for a drinks break. It's Bailey Stevenson. Stevenson oh. fires in the shot, and that wasn't too far wide. He's looked lively, the young man, since he's come on. He just added a bit of pep to that uh, line-up. There's a player down on the far side, who is uh, Joe Bennett, who gets up, and the uh, referee decides not to have a drinks break. And uh, Battleton United will start again with uh, George Marsh from the uh, goal away to our right-hand side. So Welling Garden City up against it, as they have been for most of the season, it must be said, and most of the season they're here. 
tendencies of 131, 165 have seen uh, before today nine goals go in the home net, only three in the opponents. And uh, that's now become 12 and 4. The three for Battledon United with Brad Watkins also having given Wellington City the lead, which I think is, is almost doubly disappointing for a manager when your team gets in front but finds itself quite comfortably behind. Here's Berkey, nips it inside the gauge. You've seen plenty of the ball, the number 10. Finds Bennett on the far side. And uh, Darren Manning will just be sitting there thinking, my lads have got this one well under control, and I think he'd be right. But maybe Wellingarden's taking a break now. Kolarski trying to lob the goalkeeper. Oh, and he's done it. Oh, my word. James Kolarski from, well, what? Five yards inside the Basildon United half. Oh, what a goal that is. He just looks and smiles. But Wellington and City are back in the game with one of the strangest goals we'll see all season. Wow, I mean, what, I mean he's seen the keeper out of his line. And he, he's gone, gone for the shot. And I, I think the, the keeper's looked at it and he's watched it go over the test. And I don't think he even thought it was going in. And I... Absolutely fantastic effort, and what a way to you know give your chance, self a chance, and get back into the game. Well, absolutely, one way to perp the crowd up, and also what a way to score your first goal for your new team. And James will be dining out on that one for a while. Big experienced player, of course, played a lot of time at MIM, stood down, but he never scored a goal like that. At step two. But, uh, wow, George Marsh, you see his head's gone down. That's surprising. He was really caught out there. And, well, stranger things have turned games. And Wellingard and City, from being 3-1 down and not looking as if they were going anywhere, we're suddenly back into things at the Bexhurst as we have that uh, anticipated... Uh, well, I think it's also, also you know, the, actually the ref has taken a drink break. <coughs> and Welling have just got, you know, got themselves a little bit back into the game. And it's got a little chance for Mark Weatherstone to, you know, to G the lads up a little bit now. You can see the tactic balls comes out. They're pointing a few <laughs> things out to the players, and uh, hopefully, you know, give, give them a couple of ideas. Maybe you know, a, a couple of little changes to the uh, to the ideas that they've got, and uh, find themselves a way back into the game and draw a level. Oh, you've just got to love James Golovsky and uh, Alex Harris there talking. You see, James was describing the flight of the ball with his left hand as he went into a loop. And it's like. This is how I did it, son. Well, so. I mean, I'll, I'll put that on, on Twitter later because I, 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 I noticed he started following him. Oh, it's I think terrific. It was you who, who found him on Twitter and started yeah. following him. He's following I'll us love back, it. so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give him a view of that later on for him. Well, if we see Alex after the game, we'll have to say, what did James say to you after that goal? But, uh, it's Basildon United going to get us back uh, underway as the drinks break. Has uh, finished under substitution for the uh, home side. James Mully, I think it is, who's gone off the skipper. He did take that knock. And Ryan Doughty comes on for what will be his last appearance in a Welling Garden City shirt for some time. He's off to uh, work in Ireland. Good luck to, uh, to Ryan, who's been a good servant to this club. He's one that uh, remains here after a couple of seasons of big change. And Ryan is, uh, gets a round of applause. Popular lad here. I remember seeing Ryan making his debut here, didn't we, actually? We did, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. 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 I mean, he, uh, hopefully, you know, he, he's going over to Ireland for a year, as I, uh, as I understand, so uh, hopefully he'll be back for the 24-25 uh, the season. Well, if any Irish non-league club wants a very, very solid defender, there's your man. Here's Samarsi. One thing Welling don't want to do is concede a goal. There's Berkey. Plays the ball inside. A turn... On this side from the uh, number six, Brogan, who's uh, been pushed into a more attacking role as Sam Brogan in this uh, second half by his manager, Darren Manning, which has uh, made a little bit of a uh, difference and also uh, allows Sid Walker to follow Durnell Winter, which he's been doing as well, the number five, which is why Durnell's not really got into the match. And Golden City have a throw in, which Alex Harris will take. They've used all their substitutes. Bailey Stevenson, one of them, heads it on, but uh, Joe Bennett's clearance is scuffed. Some arse is brought down on the half lane by Alex Harris, who kicks the ball away. And uh, Alex's got to be careful here, and he is going to get a yellow. Yeah, I mean, that's, well, that's one of those that, yellows that are, are completely unavoidable, isn't it? So it's. Uh, 
yeah, that's, that's a silly one to concede. Yeah, it's the new role. Keep the ball away. And I, I don't think there was any doubt play had stopped when Alex uh, made contact with that. So uh, he gets a yellow card. Here's Mercado. Plays the ball back to Jude. This three-man back line, which has got Sid Walker just kind of hovering in front of it and uh, following Dono Walker everywhere he goes. Dono Winter, rather, everywhere he goes. As uh, Mercado is invited to come across our halfway line, chips the ball. Kersey of Berkey's chest finds Samasi. Callum Berkey again on this left-hand side. There's Samasi again. Samasi turns, plays it with the right foot, but it's cleared from inside the six-yard box all the way as far as Sid Walker. Walker forward for Kai Brown, who's given time to turn on this near side, brings in Samasi. Samasi tries to go outside Alex Harris. Alex does well this time. Gets the boot in. Brad Rodkins picks it up, and he's midway inside his own half. Alex Harris is long ball forward, trying to search out Bailey Stevenson, but uh, George Marsh will return it with interest. I think England could do with a few of those a little bit later against Argentina, the way that one went out. Plenty of uh, ground gained by uh, Basildon United. Alex Harris will take the throw in with 26 minutes of the second half gone. And it's Welling Garden City 2, Basildon United 3. As Kerwin's header on that far side. Looks for Freddie Brown. Came on before the break for the injured Ethan Kessel. Here's Ryan Kerwin again. Ball forward looking for Stevenson. Bennett, who's been dependable on number two. As part of that three-man back line, there's Walker. Will bring in Berkey. Berkey on this side for Machado. Machado's got once again Samarzi outside him. Alex Harrison a one-on-one with Samarzi once more does well. The ball goes out for a corner to Battleton United. But why? Oh, why is someone not coming down and giving Alex a hand here? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you can't give him that much space for what he can do and what he's done to him all game. You can't get, show him that space. Well, they're showing him space now. It's been taken short. Gage fires it in. It is own player in the end. Berkey, who's on the edge of the six-yard box, and bounces to Charlie Crowley. But surely someone's got to come back and double-team. But meanwhile, Dernell Winter can't control the ball. And Stevenson can't keep it in. With a long ball from the back. It's been uh, well in Golden City's undoing. The fact that they haven't had any support in wide areas in, uh, in midfield. Uh, it's going to be a substitution now. It's going to be uh, Sid Walker to number six, who is going to go off. And the uh, number 15, Ben Allen, who is going to come on, the midfield man for a midfield man. Ben Allen started his career in uh, Southern United youth team. And he will come on. For Sid Walker with uh, 18 minutes of the match plus time added on remaining here at the Bexhurst. 90 minutes live in association with Easy Shelf. Peter Hill and Simon Alamandi with you bringing you step four football as we do throughout the season involving uh, Hartford Town, Ware and Welling Garden City. Chance of an FA Trophy triple, though. Uh, fairly remote at the moment. Uh, Hartford will 1-0 up at a half-time. Here's Samasi again. This time Golotsky gets to uh, a little bit of contact with him. Brad Watkins is waiting for the ball to go down. Jude heads it back well to his goalkeeper, Marsh, who just lies on the ball. George Marsh looks to bowl it out to Machado on this uh, near side. But, uh, plays the ball back. Again, to Marsh, the goalkeeper. Long kick forward, nobody at home. So it will be chased all the way by Ben Allen, the substitute, the jolly Crowley will go out. So uh, Samir Ali's actually still on the pitch as uh, Phil Ravitz announces his demise. But uh, the ball on this near side is... Uh, played forward and uh, oh don't know Winter could get in on it there but uh, Joe Bennett cool as you like goes down under pressure and uh, it's a free kick to uh, Basildon United but uh, Samir Ali that was that old uh, Paul McCartney quote wasn't it rumours of my death have been greatly exaggerated <laughs> I remember that one 
Uh, so some year rally, I can assure you, Buzzers and supporters, is still out there. We're in number nine on the uh, far side of the field. There's uh, the ball with Berkey. Pulls the ball inside to the number seven, Kai Brown. Brown's ball, good one on that far side. Ali's cross on that uh, far side almost came in. Kai Brown's going to get it back now. And Brown's got uh, plenty of uh, time once again. And Berkey, some neat footwork. He's been shadowed by uh, Ryan Dowerty. As Machado fancies his chance, but uh, was off balance as he hit it and uh, scuffed off his left foot and went behind for a goal kick to uh, Welling Garden City. So we've got 15 minutes left for the citizens to get themselves back into uh, this one. I'm assuming they're in the replays. No, no, I think it's straight to pens. It'll be straight to pens if they get one. Yeah. I've done a few of those here, haven't I? So uh, maybe look forward to another one. It was pens that uh, did the big job for them when they got through the third qualifying round, of course, which... uh, Charlie Crowley was the hero at Horsham when they uh, went through on penalties. Charlie's kick will land with Freddie Brown. Brown's beaten to it by Gage, though. But uh, ball on that far side once again with Ali with a little bit of a give and go for the number nine. But uh, doesn't get it. Oh, Boudou's giving it away to Guy Brown. And right here with the easiest of tap-ins and surely to put his side into the next round of the FA Trophy. Is Ben Allen the substitute? Well, in Garden City, one, Basildon United, four. Well, I mean, Mark is going to be so disappointed with that. And you, you look at uh, look, three of these goals, they've come from errors that have been totally avoidable. You know, the first one, the penalty, the, the second goal there, and, and, and that one there. And it's, it's as we were saying before, Pete, you know, it's, this, this, uh, this defensive uh, system for him isn't seeming to work. Yeah, certainly not. Oh, wait for me. I got the score wrong. Sorry, it's 4 <laughs> 2. But uh, they're out of sight, I think. Welling Garden City ahead have gone down. And despite that wonder goal from James Kolowski, it's, uh, it's been an afternoon for, to forget for the citizens, as has every afternoon so far at home here. They've got to start doing something here at the Bexhurst. You cannot concede five, four, and four in your first home three home games of the season and expect people to back you. So here's Gage. Mark Weatherson's going to be under a bit of pressure after this, I think. Here's Machado. Machado forward. Long ball on that far side. They fancy another one. Here's Samir Ali. He's brought down by Kerwin. Free kick the Basildon. Well... They could be five or six coming here, I've got the fear. Because Welling Garden City, well, we're biased as we would be because uh, we cover our three clubs, but uh, we will always be appreciative of visitors who play well. And uh, Basel United are really good value for their 4 2 advantage, it's got to be said. They've played well, they've been the sharper team, they've taken their opportunities, but they're up against the side who really have just not defended all game got a defender here from Gage's free kick with the uh, right boot on the edge of the area Basildon kept four back in here Gage puts it wide to Kai Brown Kai Brown onto the right boot and into the trees behind the goal fancies his chance of that trick there but the ball goes uh, behind it's a very glum looking Mark Weatherston who's just doing a kind of pace up and down the, uh, the area we know our other managers. Paul Halls is the one who does a prowl, doesn't he? He's like a, like a caged animal at the zoo. Whereas uh, Mark's just having a little saunter. I will say that looked a foul against Brad Watkins. And this time Guy Brown is offside. Chips the ball over Charlie. He's got to be a yellow guard. And fair play to referee Mr Nichols. And he's going to give him one as well. So uh, no complaints from our referee for that. Kai Brown will know. He should know the change in the rule, and the referee's got it right. Absolutely, I mean, it's, it's, you've got to keep things uh, level, haven't you? He did exactly the same for uh, for Alex Harris earlier, and he, he's got to do the same thing there. So, well, well done to the referee. But I mean, about ten seconds before that, how that wasn't a free kick, I really don't know. <laughs> Shoved him straight in the back. 
Charlie Crowley restarts. Long kick forward is Bailey Stevenson. Picks the ball up. Shown some application since he's come on, the number 11. Can't get the ball down the line, though, as Berkey, who's had a, another one. I don't think there's anybody in the green-white shirt around that a good game. But Callum Berkey's definitely had a good one. The, uh, the number eight, Alex Harris, will take the throw down the line for Donnell Winter, who we really haven't seen. Winter will try and turn the ball across. He does. That's a decent cross. Pam Watkins controls it. It's Bailey Stevenson onto the left foot. Coming up on the far side is Freddie Brown. Can he keep it in? He can, but he's got nowhere to go. And he's pushed out of that quarter fag by Marty Gage. And Freddie Brown's going to have to go all the way back to Ryan Dowerty. Dowerty does well. Further down the line. Here come Welling Garden City with a real chance with Kerwin. But in the end, it bounces off a defender and goes behind for a corner. Ten minutes plus one drinks break added on at the end of this one. If they're going to get back into this one, then they have got to do it in the next couple of moments, you would guess. Ryan Kerwin's going to uh, take the corner. Charlie Crowley's come up and he's almost on the halfway line here. Basildon have kept two forward. And uh, Welling Garden City at the moment have only got Charlie Crowley back defending. So uh, that's going to be an interesting one if this one breaks quickly. Corner's going to come across anyway. The corner does. And oh, it's Mikado just gets the barest of nicks on it. Takes it above everybody. Then Allen forward for Mikado. Can't control and Boudou just skies it towards the edge of the Basildon area. Long up and under. Charlie's got to watch it and he will. Kai Brown made a half-hearted break. Double substitution about to be made by Darren Manning on that uh, far side of the field as Gage and Kerwin go in for the ball. Kerwin goes down, stays down. Gage arrives with the ball. It's blocked well by Freddie Brown on the halfway line and Doughty shows a good bit of strength. And Kolotsky on that far side finds Freddie Brown. He's well and said he coming forward. Kerwin goes down under challenge. And that's a red card. Well, Kerwin went down under challenge from Joe Bennett. And Bennett has seen straight red for our referee, David Nicholson. And for the final nine minutes plus time added on for stoppages of this game, Basildon Junior United are going to be down to ten. Well, I mean, I didn't see that red card coming there at all. But obviously the ref's seen, seen something that we didn't see. I don't know if it was, like, two-footed. Um, I wouldn't say it was especially late. Obviously it was late, but well, I wouldn't say it was especially late. I don't, I don't hold, hold fire on that. Was Joe Bennett still on the pitch? Oh, is he coming off this side? Because he's near the uh, near his changing room, I'm assuming. Sorry, Simon. I, I had the feeling when he went in there that the referee might have got it wrong. But uh, in the end, he hasn't. And there goes Joe Bennett. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I don't know what sort of change. Obviously, uh, um, they, they were going to make a couple of uh, substitutions. He's sort of uh, sat back down. The manager's having a, a bit of a conflag with his, uh, with his assistant. So uh, I think that might change their uh, train of thought there as well. 4-2 oh, down, 11 against 10. Who knows? Here's the kick. going to be taken by Freddie Brown on that far side. Absolutely packed inside. That uh, Basildon United 18-yard box. Here comes Freddie's kick. Low and poor. But shot comes in on the rebound from Stevenson. Basildon still got to get it clear. Stevenson is uh, pulled up for the infringement on the edge of the area. And Basildon, I am sure will take their time about taking the uh, free kick. You're right, I don't know what kind of change Darren Manning had in uh, mind for his uh, team, but the uh, subs have sat down. And I think they've got to reorganise a little bit at the back. Bennett was playing right side of a back three, wasn't he? So we'll uh, see who's... It looks like Sid Walker, possibly, who's gone over there. And uh, that's uh, the change, but uh, it's Alex Harris... Off of Samasi, but uh, Ben Allen gets there first. Alex, high up and under, which is going to land just shy of us here. I've not to avoid the ball so far this season, which is always good to know. Ben Allen, who scored the fourth goal right in front of us, will uh, leave the throw to Marty Gage. Well, he'll leave it to Alejandro Mercado. And there's uh, training tops being brought back on on the Basildon bench. So I think those substitutions, ideas have changed. There's Samasi. Samasi plays the ball inside to Brown. Brown for uh, Allen. Allen fires in the shot. That wasn't far wide. Wide at the left-hand post. And once again, all coming down the left-hand side. 
and uh, some RC and Brown having just too much space to uh, to operate in. I think one of the substitutions might be being made now. The board is uh, being readied on that uh, far side. But I think Charlie Crowell is going to get the goal kick in first, which he does. Long one forward off the uh, chest of uh, Brad Watkins there, who's come deep into his own half. It's being put under pressure by Ali. Watkins does well to hold off the number nine. Two number nine's really battling for the ball there. And the ball goes for uh, Charlie Crowley. Charlie, midway inside his own half. Charlie still looking up. Only for somewhere to put it. Does with the right boot diagonally, right to left. In goes Kerwin. Bailey Stevenson react well, but uh, Mercado's there once again. The, num- the number four for Brentwood. Finds Allen. Allen will find Samarsi. Alex Harris is out of position. Joshua Steele is the defender. Samarsi goes around him. Samarsi's in here and touched in by Guy Brown for the hat trick. 5 2 Basildon United. Don't know whether Samarsi might claim it because I don't know whether it went over the line before Guy Brown got there, but you know what he had on his mind. Three for the number seven, five for Basildon United, and they will go on in the FA Trophy. Yeah, and once again, as you're saying, Pete, it's going down this left-hand side. It's just been far too easy for them down there today. I mean, Alex Harris, he's had a, he's had a torrid adventure uh, this afternoon. And, uh, you know, you see him there, he, he's, you know, his head's down, he's bent down. You can see the disappointment in uh, all the Welling players' faces. But uh, they've got to take this and they've got to, you know, obviously it's too late to do anything about it today. But they've got to learn from this and they've got to implement something on the training field to deal with these circumstances because as, you, as you've said you, know, you can't go conceding this many goals at home now, I think next week at Biggleswade Town is going to be a massive game for Mark Weatherston <laughs> and Biggleswade Town is not an easy place to go although Hartford Town did very well there earlier in the season of course but uh, they're one of the teams that were favoured to get out of this division so that's going to be a tough test for Welling Garden City substitution about to be made now it's going to be the uh, Number 10, Marty Gage, who uh, comes off. And the uh, 14, Alfie Osborne, who uh, comes on. So uh, Marty Gage has played uh, his part at a good game. Has the, uh, the number 10. And uh, Osborne will just come into midfield. I've, I was going to say to shore things up, but I don't really think that's uh, appropriate. Bearing in mind the circumstances. Three minutes plus time added on. Can't go fast enough for Mark Weatherston and his team, but uh, who knows, Basildon might fancy another one. Koloski does well. Shame for him, because he's won the goal. will be well forgotten in all of this. But, uh, far side of the field is Freddie Brown. Down the line. The cross is going to come over. Oh, a good header by Kai Jude and thumped away by Burkey. As... Uh, was Bailey Stevenson was just thinking he might get in. Another substitution and hat trick hero is going to go off. Kai Brown will be uh, replaced by Callum Fitzer. So off goes Brown, the uh, number seven, and Callum Fitzer, the young striker who was uh, formerly at Canvey Island, will come on for the uh, final few minutes. Plus the time added on for stoppages. To throw in on this near side to Willing Garden City, which uh, Alex Harris will uh, take. Alex will uh, take his time. Sun's gone down a bit. Bit of shadow out there now. Certainly needed it. Alex Harris gets the ball back, puts the ball across. That's a good cross. Header comes in into the back of the net from Brad Watkins, his second of the game. Consolation. It is for Welling Garden City and nothing more. It's Welling Garden City 3, Basildon United 5. Well, I mean, we, we certainly haven't been short of goals, have we, today? And this, this is the thing, I mean, you know, they've, they've, they've scored those three goals today. They've, they've done well, they've created plenty of chances going forward. If they could just sort out their problems at the back, then things would be so much better for them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, they haven't, and Basildon United have been well worth their lead. It's got to be said, as uh, Alex skies the ball up. He at least will be happy with that cross. Stevenson can't keep it in. It's going to be a throw-in to uh, Basildon United. 
Well, you always get plenty of goals here this season, but uh, not many of them in the right direction, unfortunately, at the moment, as uh, Joshua Steele does well to keep the ball in. Long, lofted ball forward, which George Marsh will knock down on his chest. Wait for Brad Watkins, who he's on hat trick as well, will come towards him and uh, just lie down on top of the football as we enter the last minute. The Beggs Hurst here on 90 Minutes Live in association with uh, Easy Shelf. It's uh, Alejandro Machado down the line for Berkey. Berkey again is uh, Machado. Ball at the outside of the boot. Sent some Marcy going down the left-hand side. But he's only going to make sure Will and Garden see have a throw in. The strange man of the match for me is despite the fact there's been eight goals and there's a hat-trick player out there who's been a defender. Alejandro Machado, I thought, has been absolutely immaculate at number four for uh, Basildon United. Yeah, I, I, he's had a fantastic game, hasn't he? And, and as you said, you know, he's... It's, it, 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 it's really shone above him, you know, and, and, and he does look very strong player for, uh, for this level. Yeah, good luck to Basildon for the rest of the season in his mid league division at 1 North. I'm sure they'll cause some teams some problems with this side. As uh, Samir Ali picks it up on the far side, good luck to them as well, wherever they go in the uh, FA Trophy. Either New Salamis or Lowestoft. As, uh, Coming forward is Bailey Stevens. So it looks for Donnell Winter in the area. It's Winter. Fires it in. Good block by Kai Jude. The Basildon skipper as the ball goes out for a corner. 46 minutes on the watch of this second half. Taken quickly. Winter to Kerwin. Kerwin, another good one. Watkins was uh, lurking on the far post, but that one goes over the top of his head and out for a goal kick. So it's up to our referee, Mr Nicholson, as to how long we're going to have added on now. At the end of for this FA Trophy first qualifying round tight. This competition's been kind of winning well in Garden City over the recent past, but not been going to them this afternoon. Second year in a row they will go out at the first possible stage, as they did last year against New Salamis. So Alex Harris will uh, take the throw, stick around afterwards because we'll try and tell you how the, uh, the other teams got in, got on rather, in the uh, FA uh, Trophy. Here's uh, Ryan Doughty. So we, uh, ashamed to say goodbye to him. Let's uh, wish him good luck in Ireland. And he's won well in Garden City, a free kick on this uh, near side of the field. It's going to be Freddie Brown who's going to take it. Well, there's considerable light in there now. Ryan Dowdy in there, Josh Steele, James Koloski. I mean, there, uh, there really is some height in there for Welling Garden City if Freddie Brown can get this delivery right. Brown then will wait for uh, some RC to get away from the ball, fires it in, and uh, Berkey just heads it away easily. Why did he fire a ball in when you've got so much heading talent in the box, which could come in now? Back in. It's back in by Brown off of. Uh, Dowards his head, still on the edge of the area is uh, Freddie Brown. Brings in Alex Harris, who will find Koloski. Koloski, good footwork, lets him down in the end though. Alan will bring in Samir Ali. Samir Ali against Kerwin. Turns inside, Ryan Kerwin does well. Get his boots to the ball. Here's Ryan Dowarty down the line for Bailey Stevenson. Stevenson. On the edge of the area, Stevenson still going. Strong challenge coming in, but he shrugs it aside. Stevenson still going. Still Bailey Stevenson. Pulls the ball back. Darnell Winter, superb clearance. Off the line by the skipper, Kai Jude. Well, that was going in. Goalkeeper was beaten, but the skipper got his head in the way. Oh, I mean, yeah, more fantastic defending from uh, Great work from, uh, from Bailey Stevenson there as well. But, uh, I mean, well, well, they have definitely had their chances, but uh, it's, yeah, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, it's gone on for them at the other end. Oh, Bailey, Bailey Stevenson just perhaps giving a sign that uh, next week I want to start. Gov. As the ball breaks outside that uh, Basildon area and on number 14, Alfie Osborne just thumps it upfield. Forward by Kerwin. Well, in Garden City, straight in the best period in the match, probably here. In injury time at the end of the game, and they're 5-3 down. It's Koloski on the halfway line. Chips the ball forward, aimless. 
Mercado will find some RC. I mean, uh, how much has he left in the tank? Well, probably not a great deal because he's keeping hold of the ball. Midway inside his own half. Plays the ball in for Ben Allen. Allen can't turn away from the tackle of Freddie Brown, though. Brown does well. Shrugs aside Osborne. Brings in Alex Harris on the far side. He looked for Bailey Stevenson, but it's chested down by Sid Walker. And the goalkeeper, George Marsh, will come out and collect it. Four minutes over the top from uh, Mr Nicholson. And Basildon United, barring something even more dramatic than James Kolarski's goal for Willing Garden City, are on their way into the next round of the FA Trophy. Long kick forward by George Marsh. Alex Harris always missed it. And Samarzi on this near side. Well, wasn't quick enough. And in the end, Alex is allowed to recover and put the ball out for a throw-in, which I'm sure Basildon won't show too much uh, in the way of uh, ambition. Callum Burkey will take the throw. Find Samarzi. Samarzi back for uh, Callum Burkey. Samarzi will uh, get the ball back. Plays it in the field for the substitute, Alfie Osborne. Osborne brings the ball forward. Got Samir Ali on that far side. Samir Ali. I think uh, well, he's going to take it down to the corner flag. Oh, <laughs> maybe he's feeling the heat. Who knows? But uh, Samir Ali uh, up against uh, Kerwin on that far side. Boudou tries to sort it out. In the end, he gives Battleton a throw in. Six minutes over the top. At the uh, Pexhurst. Not sure, of course, for the fixtures. Next time we'll be here, but this time next week we know we will be at Watson Park with the FA Cup second qualifying round between Ware and Chelmsford City. Ball on the far side in possession of Basildon United again. Oh, a miss kick in the end from uh, Callum Fitzer. Otherwise, things could have got decidedly worse in, uh, in injury time. Is Ben Allen. Midway inside the well in half. Allen going down that right hand side. He's around Golovsky. Good challenge coming in from Kerwin. Oh, almost gave it away to Fitzer. And Freddie Brown will take the throw in. And then. Was it Ben Allen? Somebody uh, went in a little hard on Ryan Kerwin on that far side. Referee, though, doesn't give anything. And there, with a chance to turn, is Bailey Stevenson. Stevenson forward. He's got Callum Berkey with him. Stevenson still going. Machado's there. Good cross by Stevenson. Here's Donnell Winter. Donnell Winter back. Ryan Doughty, one touch, two touch, fires it over the top. And surely Welling Garden City's last opportunity has gone begging. But once again, Bailey Stevenson, it's got to be said, if there has been one bright spark, there haven't been many, it's been his appearance from the substitutes bench. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think he's... Uh, as you said, you know, he's, he's reacting to, uh, to being on the bench and saying, look, Gaffer, I'm, I'm going to start next week. And uh, from, from what he's produced uh, since he came on, I, I, I really don't think you can argue with that. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, George Marsh restarts, referee still not looking at his watch. Seven minutes over the top. Long, high ball by Boudahoud. And uh, in the end, it will go out of uh, play. Oh, Mrs. H has got salad on the go tonight because it's warm. Because <laughs> my dinner will be in the dog. Uh, but, uh, certainly, certainly don't want a stew. Do no, you? I don't think so. No, well, uh, the hot pot, I think, will uh, will wait for another day. As uh, Kerwin brings the ball forward, long one, and uh, Buda Hood is up there and just puts it over the top of the crossbar. Came up from the back. They've had their chances, but we've got to say that. A few of them have occurred when Basildon have taken their foot off the gas. And why did they need to put their foot on the gas when they were 5-3 in front? Basildon United will go through to the next round of the FA Trophy. The beaten Welling Garden City are here comfortably by five goals to three. Well, I mean, as you say, you know, Welling Garden City can't complain about that. Basildon United, you know, definitely the... the uh, the better side of it, um, you know, good luck to them for the uh, rest of the season. Good luck to them in the uh, in the next round. But uh, a very disappointing um, afternoon if you're already gone City fan. Yeah, disappointing for the locals once again. Third time this season. Our home record so far: two five one four three five. Something Mark Weatherstone will have to get to grips with. 
But uh, we'll talk to the boss uh, after this one. Sorry, the game, well, well you wouldn't believe Wellington said he went in front, but that was after Charlie Crowley had made some super saves. And Brad Watkins, who's just punted one in from inside the uh, six-yard box. By the break, Battle and United were in front, though. First one was uh, a penalty, which uh, was conceded after Alex Harris brought down Clyde Samarsi on the left-hand side of the box. And the penalty was thumped in, with very little doubt about it, by Kai Brown. And then just before half-time, it was Brown again, who uh, put the ball in, having been left alone on the right-hand side of the box to give the visitors a 2-1 advantage at the break. They went 3-1 up when uh, Clyde Samarsi, who'd given a headache to well in throughout the game, scored in the uh, 59th minute to make it 3-1. looked as if Wellin were done then, but a wonder goal from James Koloski, which uh, came in from, uh, well, I reckon five yards inside the Battle of United half, catching George Marsh out, sailing over the goalkeeper's head. Wellin were back in business at uh, 2-3 down, but that all went again in the 76th minute when substitute Ben Allen was left alone inside the six-yard box to side foot home his uh, first goal of the season. Kai Brown completed his hat-trick before going off as a substitute and Wellin pulled back and nothing but a consolation with Brad Watkins second of the afternoon from Alex Harris's right wing cross. That's the story of the game and the departure for Welling Garden City from this season's FA Trophy. They will uh, face league action this time next week. They'll be at Bigglesway Town uh, in the uh, Southern League Division 1 uh, Central. If you were listening to us from Basildon, I know they gave us a bit of coverage on the socials. Thanks for that. I'm sure you enjoyed that. And uh, good luck to you in the next round and for the rest of the season as uh, they've had a very uh, a, a decent start. Well, it's all happened in the, uh, the FA Trophy. Uh, not good for where They've gone down 4-1 at uh, Hadley. So Hadley 4 where one well Fred Moncur scored the goal um, Hartford Town is now all over so we do have a team into the uh, second qualifying round of the FA Trophy well done Ben Hurden the Hartford Town well done uh. sorry about that they have uh, beaten Grey's Athletic by three goals to two so Ben Hurd getting on the uh, score sheet and Harry Gilzine as well. So well done the boys there. Brian Jennings will be absolutely delighted with that and so are we because uh, in the next round of competition then Harford will go to Felix Stowe or Brentwood. So uh, if we can uh, find out how Felix Stowe and Brentwood went. We'll tell you where uh, Hartford will be going the next round of the competition. I've been to Brentwood, never been to Felix Stowe. Well, so, uh, uh, not that I'll, I'll be biased. Felix, <laughs> Felix Stowe and Walton United. That's the one. Uh, Felix Stowe through 2 0 against Brentwood. Well, it looks like we might be on our way to Felix Stowe on the uh, 23rd, isn't it? 26th rather. Of September or 23rd of September. 23rd of September, get it right. On the 23rd of September, a little trip to Felix, though. That's just down the road from where I was in Frinton, actually. Yeah, could, uh, yeah, could, uh, yeah, Mrs. H could like that draw, you know. Yeah. I could, I'll get some brownie points there. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for uh, listening here on uh, 90 Minutes Live. You're well Garden City fan. Well, sorry we couldn't bring you better news uh, than we did. Thanks for sticking with it. You're going to have to stick with it all season. I'm sure they'll get it right. But uh, we will have the thoughts of Mark Weatherston after uh, this one, and they will be online uh, tomorrow with, uh, if you can bear to watch it from behind the sofa, the uh, YouTube highlights. If you're from Basildon, you'd like to see those YouTube highlights, but I know you will have covered it also on uh, Beats TV, which is very good, by the way. Impressed with your coverage. Good luck to them for the rest of the season and for everybody. We will join you next week live at 2.55 from Watson Park, the big one, where against Chelmsford City in the FA Cup second qualifying round. Thanks, Simon. Thanks to you for listening. And I'll leave you with a full-time score here of Wellington City 3, Battleton United 5. Have a good evening.